Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meeting, May 31st, 2023. It is 6 p.m. in the evening, uh, bright and sunny. I'm sorry everyone is having sun in their eyes. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MGL chapter 30A and section 20 until March 31st, 2025. Please note that as an option for remote attendance and participation is provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be, susp um, will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person virtues versus virtual attendance accordingly. For pur purposes of in-person in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Office with remote participation details below. The dial-in number 312-626-6799. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. Thank you. All right, um, first uh, item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Yes, come on up. Come, come on up. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Moore. I live on Bayer Street and okay. I'm here to um, address, I, I want to raise my concerns about the speeding on the street. I've lived on the street for 48 years, and for at least 40 of those years, I know speeding has been a problem. I've had, uh, I've heard all, uh, when, we, when our kids were little, we would not let them ride their bikes on the street between 4 and 6 p.m. because people coming home from work just, they treat it as though it's their own personal street uh, and the pedestrians be damned pretty much. Um, I don't know if it's the yellow lines that they painted on the street that makes people go faster. It seems like it's gotten worse in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just paying more attention because we have a whole bunch of little kids on the street again. I with uh, grandchildren and um, or without grandchildren, there's about a dozen kids on the street. Then when you have their friends come over and grandchildren come over, that can go up to 15 to 20 kids. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I periodically, my husband and I would bring this up with the police and we- this? Got Are they talking about- The woman on Third Street. Apparently, there's a lot of speeding on the street. Okay. People pause, please, or mute their phones. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry about that. for the interruption. Um, the uh, Not the current police chief. I'm talking like maybe in the 80s and 90s. I, I, we were just never really satisfied with the police response. If a cruiser is on the street, um, way down at the end of the parking lot on South Main Street, or sometimes parked by the church. It's a long straight street. People can see the cruiser a mile away. They slow down and mm -hmm. very few people get caught speeding, but I know it's a problem. Um, I was told once by a policeman years ago that he wasn't even sure if the speed limit signs are legal. And I thought, right. well, what kind of answer is that from the police? I was told, well, how do you know they're speeding? You don't have a radar gun. Well, that's baloney, I'm sorry. I can tell if I, if I have a split second to jump from the street onto somebody's lawn because the car is whizzing by. Yeah, he's not doing 25. I was told once that, oh, we need to have the license plates of the car. Um, because there was 
there was one person in town who sped up and down the street a lot. And I described the car. It was a 1959 Ford. It was the it was pretty unique in town. And to for the police to tell me, well, you need the license plate so we can ID the car. Again, that's baloney. When there's <laughs> only one car like that in in the county or <clears throat> You, you can pretty much tell, but um, so I don't know what the what kind of solutions we're looking at. I know I've talked with neighbors and we've talked about how um, you put the the speed limit, the flashing light on the street. And uh, Trevor, I just wanted to mention I invited you to the through our correspondence. Right, to come tonight and and speak because I I thought it was important for you to to have that time uh, to, to to we don't normally respond to public comment but I wanted you to have your time to have your say here okay. in front of us and then just to note that later on in our agenda tonight we'll be adopting a twenty five mile an hour speed limit for the right. town right I I heard and just. And then Chief is also looking at a few things where, look, you know, those traffic signs that slow traffic down and get people to kind of slow down. We right. look at speed bumps, uh, talk with the um, highway department. Those are problematic for the plowing. But um, so so we so have a few a things. So a dead that, kid problematic. Yeah. So we're, we're working on a few things. It's not something we'll be able to answer you tonight. But just I wanted you to be well, able to speak to us and then we can. I know what has been tried in the past, and it, and the solutions have been temporary at best. We had one of those flashing lights that mm -hmm. you, you're going X miles per hour, speed limit is this, um, and it doesn't, it might slow a few people down, but as soon as that that thing is taken down, they go right back to speeding. Not everybody does slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, other neighbors and I have, motion to people to slow down we go like this and it's and in response we get hi or the, somebody will flip us the finger or whatever um it, it people it's like they don't care and as far as changing the speed limit to 25 miles per hour unless otherwise posted it is posted mm -hmm. at both ends of the street and it, it says children Yep. But people don't care. And I, I can tell you some of the regular speeders on the street. Yeah, we don't we don't need that um, here in and, public. So <laughs> and I oh nice. That's good. I go out with this. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. What we um, will follow up on it. Yep. We but, appreciate your comments. Uh, but I want we need something that's more permanent than just giving people tickets now and again where they can, especially when they can see the police cars a mile away and um, and putting up the little blinking sign that's, that gives you your speed because it, it doesn't work, not permanently. Okay, thank you. I, I really appreciate you coming in and we will have the chief follow up. Okay, and just one other thing. I was talking with one neighbor and she told me she saw two kids drag racing on the street I don't know what time of day it was, but mm -hmm. they were side by side on Thea Street, speeding down the street. So, and and there is a lot of traffic. Every time I go out to walk the dog, doesn't matter what time of day or night it is. I there's at least one or two cars go that go by. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I very appreciate much. you coming in. Thank you. Thank we'll you. we'll have the chief follow up. Thanks. Yeah. Um, is there any other public comment? All right. Um, the parade committee, Holly and Kelly, and anybody else who wants to come up? Welcome. Welcome. We're very excited. Hello. Pam, oh, yes. All of you, please introduce yourselves for our audience. Thank you, Pam. No, it's great. I'm glad you're here. So we wanted to just give you an update. I know. Would you introduce yourselves? I'm sorry? Each of you introduce yourselves. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm Holly Lankowski, so one of the chairs of the uh, parade committee. Kelly Sharaf's co-chair. 
Pam Hodgkins, Parade Committee Work Group and President of the Deerfield Lions Club. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Any other protocols that? No, nope. no, nope. no. We just—it's just—it's <laughs> just never, never done this. Many people know you, but some don't. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Um, so we just wanted to give you an update and then see where you had some questions. Um, so just wanted to report in that we are setting up the lineup of the parade. Um, right now, we've heard from five um, elected officials um, in in our state. Um, so we have um, Natalie Blay, Joe Comerford, Ashley Randall, um, Jim McGovern, and Dave Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, right. And I had checked in um, as far as uh, writing on the float, and they would participate on the float with the select board if that's still yep. acceptable. Yes. Sure. Okay. Because yes. we just, for planning purposes, I wanted to make sure. Um, we have 10 um, bands performing all kinds of music. Uh, we have nine floats, 16 other businesses um, who are participating in some way, either with, you know, something more celebratory or one of their vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we have local <laughs> veterans. We have town administration, police and fire um, personnel from several surrounding communities. Uh, we have classic and vintage cars. Pam is tutoring me on the difference of classic and vintage, so I'm trying to be careful <laughs> that I don't call something wrong. She's an expert. <laughs> and we have um, some local clubs and organizations that are participating as well. Wonderful. Right now, with the lineup of what we're looking at, I think we're estimating the parade's going to be an hour and 45 minutes. Might get a little closer to two hours, but just a rough guesstimate at this point. And we're doing that based on Waitley's parade and Sunderland's parade because they shared their lineups mm -hmm. and we know how long their parades were, which was really helpful. Um, we did get really good help from those two communities as far as That's important Thank parade you. information. Um, so the comparable uh, length of time then? Well, Waitley was shorter and Sunderland had a few more count of things going in than we do. Yeah. And they were an hour 53. Okay. Um, but um, I, th I think we're going to be roughly in that same yeah. ballpark. Um, we're still chasing down paperwork. Unfortunately, for about a third of our entries, it may be just a little widget of something that we still need based on what our paperwork said should have come in. Um, so that's been really tedious and very time consuming. Um, Pam and I have basically been trying to track down stuff from people. And uh, anyway, we're doing our best. Um, you want to talk about volunteers? Sure. So we've had uh, a few volunteers step up. We're looking at what, like 10 to 15 maybe so far, but we need a ton more, as you can imagine. The parade okay. is quite, uh, quite a thing to put together. Uh, we have tried numerous ways of advertising from uh, the newspaper. We did some advertising. We also did digital through the recorder. We've also done social media. It's on our webpage. Um, we've reached out to the high school through Scott Dredge and all the groups there. Um, and then we've done in-person meetings offering that. And so, you know, we've gotten a few, but anyone wants to help out, we would love it. Okay. okay. What sort of help are you specifically looking for? Like, Is we, it for... like week before. So, we, you know, we're busy the whole week before, whether it's, you know, just continued prep, uh, planning, also the putting out signs, making sure that we've gotten road closure set, things like that. Um, and then the day before the parade, making sure things are all set. And then the day of the parade, I mean, you can imagine it's just staging and right. making sure the roads are closed. We have volunteers in all those locations, parking, bathrooms. We have, you know. yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I know there is, there is a lot. Um, we do want to actually do the parade route after the parade to make sure we pick up anything that gets left mm -hmm. behind. We want to make sure we leave the um, town as clean as we find it. Cause you know, I don't want people doing any kind of trash along the way. I mean, yeah. that wouldn't be fair. So we're going to try to do that. We also had um, cooperation, good cooperation from two churches that are kind of on opposite sides of Sugarloaf. We've got Holy Family, <laughs> Jesus, who offered to um, allow us to use their parking and also they're opening up their bathrooms as well. 
Um, Tilton Library is going to stay open, um, keep their bathroom open for us. Um, Greenfield Savings Bank is allowing us to designate their parking lot as handicapped parking. Okay. So we will have one spot where people can be assured um, they will have that and as well at the Tilton, Tilton Library as well. So we're going to designate those two areas for um, people um, who need to use um, a handicap placard in those areas. But um, as Kelly said, you know, all of those areas, we have to staff somebody. Mm -hmm. So where there's road closures, parking, um, where we need to do some monitoring, uh, we need some help with that. Do any of you have questions for us? Um, well, I, I know we um, are, we were going to use Justin Galinsky's trailer, mm -hmm. but um, Jeffrey Hubbard has stepped up from Waitley and, and is offering us a, a little bit smaller mm -hmm. hay wagon. So um, the select board will be using Jeffrey Hubbard's um, vehicle, and, and um, I believe it will be a tractor and trailer Okay, uh, rather than Galinsky. So I, I wanted to make sure. And what time did you want people to show up? Like... Where did you want, when did you want us to be there? Well, the Deer, Deerfield contingency is going to be in the beginning of the parade, um, but we're asking our participants to be um, at the staging locations for one o'clock. For okay. one o'clock? The parade will kick off at two. Um, I would say, roughly speaking, maybe five uh, entries back would be the select yeah. board. Yeah. Um, because okay. we have a few you know, just sure. beginning, Initial stuff. and then then we're going to do a Deerfield contingency followed after yep. your um, float. Yep. Um, and as I said, uh, the um, state elected people will participate on yours. And uh, we just heard from Jim McGovern's office just a few days ago. So Go that ahead. was good. They were yeah. reaching back out to us to check in on things. Nice. Good. Yeah. Um, he, he did say he was going to be there. And, and we haven't heard from the governor yet, have we, Tracy? I mean, Casey. I don't think they. Were, I think no, they, she's not able they, to attend. Yeah, the lieutenant governor, governor as well. Lieutenant yeah, governor. yeah. They, yeah they the lieutenant governor had said no. She already had another commitment, but I just wanted to make sure. So yep. the governor and they also, they also had told us no. Okay, yeah. governor, lieutenant governor, and we also did the um, attorney general, and okay. all, none none of them were available. Okay, so we did reach out. Um, any other questions? Did Did you need the town hall open? I assume. For um, restrooms and stuff. Or? I had asked Carolyn about that at our last steering yeah. committee. So if it could be um, for access to a bathroom, yeah. and who knows, maybe for five minutes of relief. Right. Exactly. If it's, if it's a nice Hot day, day yeah. you know, just for people to get a break. But yeah. um, sure, it's going to be perfect weather. It's. I know it'd be just like it's today. Just, it's mm -hmm. it's going to be perfect. I just keep channeling that. So. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, we we have um, a handful of things that we're still chasing for people. And I do know from the last steering committee meeting, um, we have one concern. And the concern was um, that Chris Harris had indicated uh, for the mummers that he didn't want them bothered with filling out our parade paperwork. That's kind of a tough thing for us because everybody we've worked with has filled out the paperwork. Um, bands, local businesses, people we know very well, we've had to ask them to fill out lengthy paperwork because again, this is what we were charged with doing based on what the town wanted us to do as far as holding the town harmless from any um, suits or anything like that. So I guess my question is, are we going to have them do paperwork or is the select board going to waive that? Well, I talked to Chris and the select board is, is uh, talked last, our last meeting last week. It, the friends of Deerfield will be covering all the legal um, liability issues. And then we, of course, because it is a town event, we have insurance. So going through the friends of Deerfield is fine. Um, the Mummers is a nationally known group. But we, we have other participants who are falling under the Lions Club for vintage cars that are part of their um, and, past and, and car shows. And we'll be glad to waive that insurance as well. well We've been waiving them um, right along because it, you know, I understand the, the need for it, but this is a town event and most everybody has insurance anyway from, uh, you know, other things. 
Okay, well, I, I guess it puts us in the pickle of we've been hounding local pe people for this paperwork, saying it's required to participate. Why? And in all honesty, we've lost some local people who would have participated because they didn't like all the paperwork. Why? Why can't the members fill it out? I don't get it. Um, Chris, difficult? do you would you like to um, address what you had asked us to waive? Yeah, I mean, because the Friends of Deerfield signed a contract with them. And so those those contractual relationships cover indemnification, et cetera. And then the Friends of Deerfield have named on a $2 million policy, the town of Deerfield is additional insured. We, we don't need more paperwork. We're totally covered. We're totally covered the way it's lit, locked up right now. And the other people aren't signing up through the Friends of Deerfield. Is that what you're saying? Right. It was, it, it was their contract. I see. That was why Friends of Deerfield filled out the initial paperwork. Okay. I just didn't understand what the difference was. Well, we just feel as a parade work group that if you're holding them in a different category, then we have a number of things that we're still chasing people for, and we would like to... Yeah. Ask for you to waive all of this. I, 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 it's, I don't see what, Yeah, it's not a big it, deal, Holly. The the reason why Chris had requested it was because the Friends of Deerfield have the contract with the Mummers. So can I just make a couple copies yeah. of this? Yeah. Just so if you can stop us from doing additional paperwork for the rest of what we need um, and waive that, um, then Save you a bunch of time. Well, yeah. it'll save time, but it'll put everybody on a, at least a more level playing field. Yeah. It would have been nice well, to know this earlier because honestly, well, it was a Friends of Deerfield contract with the Mummers versus the Mummers coming separately. Right. But, it, it, you know, honestly, we would have addressed this earlier, but it kind of came to us late in the game as well. Um, so, yeah. You know, it was well past the parade deadline when that was brought to our attention. Well, my understanding is that people were uh, the ones that who had sponsored the Mummers or donated to the Friends of Deerfield to support the Mummers. The reason why um, they they wanted the Mummers in there, and, and it is similar to Conway, where they had separate donations to support the Mummers participating versus the town of Deerfield paying or the parade, you know, budget paying for the mummers. It was a separate donation through the but, Friends but of But the town authorized $2,500 at the steering committee meeting. Right. To so it's not just the, other donors. Right. Is there right. Any, the town. Is there anybody else we could get if we didn't have to harass them so much paperwork? I'm just wondering if there's anybody else that really wanted to be in it. That... Oh, there were lots of people who wanted to be in it. And as I make 22 to 50 phone calls asking for paperwork, mm -hmm. according to the rules and regulations that the town and your attorneys, I believe, yeah. drafted all of this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm quoting one sentence here. Participation in the parade is by invitation from the parade work group only. Mm -hmm. That is your wording. Yeah. Um, we have been very... Um, particular following all the rules and regulations yep and that Kelly had not been able to get the certificate of insurance mm -hmm. Alliance mm -hmm. Clubs international because of our reputation in this community for putting on major events right. what would have happened if I was denied that um the we would have Alliance waver. club would not have been in it and right. then we would have had to go Pam we would have wavered it because right. you participated we didn't know that yeah we all the rules and regulations definitely sounds so, like some a lot of organizations I, and farms especially were very concerned about not being able to participate because of the rules and regulations and and we said yeah. that right from the beginning that the, we wanted to make sure that there was a waiver uh, process and we just wanted to know who we were wavering for so but, if but a, it wasn't a waiver of filling out a document to participate that's right it was a waiver of a certificate of insurance for a right. million dollars. Yeah. Right. But these are the five required forms. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all had to so go going out. forward, 
we were rec we appreciate the fact that you've had a lot of problems and people are upset with the amount of paperwork. Are there people that would like to participate that you would still like to invite if there were a way to short circuit this? I mean, I, I I'm, I'm just not sure we have time. Okay, well, that's, that's okay. That, you know, I mean, there's we, probably no point in getting really any upset, excited I mean, if we do this. somebody reach out, I mean, we've been reactive trying yeah. to move things along, but yeah. we went from an April 15th deadline to still chasing paperwork. Yeah. And then on May 9th, we got dropped that a band had been hired without us knowing about it. Yeah. I just don't think that's fair. You know, we've really yeah. worked hard and I, I appreciate the fact that you want to work with anybody and you're waiving things. And, and we're grateful of that because it's helped a lot of people. But I just don't think it's fair that all of our local people were diligent and did the paperwork yeah. and went through the right process. That's, that's a fair point. That's, that's a fair, fair point, point. Yeah, It's a it great is. point. And, and is there anything that we can do that's going to ameliorate that problem? Um, or all the participants that you currently have online, have they all filled out the paperwork and, and they're, all, they're all covered or are we still Wait, We are still chasing what I just gave yeah. Trevor. So these, these short list of folks? Well, okay. yeah, and we didn't name them all because we Understood. are chasing a bunch of driver's license and insurance I for vehicles and a, a, a few other right. things. So um, I will take your directive. Um, we will follow what you would like us to do, but we... Just wanted to share did. our yeah. frustration. Yeah, that's fair. I'm glad you did. We needed to hear it. Um, if there's anything that like seems glaringly unsafe, obviously kind of keep moving along. But if it's like somebody hasn't given you a copy of the license and they're they're, they're you know want to drive in a car, I, I I wouldn't hound it too much. You know, at this point, I think okay. especially with the classic be... cars and the engine right. cars, um, yeah. sometimes they have to substitute a car at the last minute. Of course. And what? We have to you got to switch all that? No, that is Cam registration. No, it's too no. much. That's Cam is crossed and I's and P's too much. Set by you. I know. That's, I know. Understood. Yep. yep. And that's why we have really tried to have a wavering process. It's just that we just didn't want to give a blanket waiver. I, I mean, I still felt that we have responsibility and if, and, and giving us the names of anybody so far, there is no one that we have not wavered. It's just that it was the idea was that it was really important for us to at least, you know, vote for the waiver so that we knew what we were responsible for and that there would be liability coverage if there was an incident. Okay. And, and there's that going was to be what, a lot of fun things for all ages. That's agents. awesome. Right. And we awesome. wanted to keep a lot of that a surprise. That's good. That's well, good. I'm really excited. And you will be surprised. <laughs> I um, that's cool. So, in Thanks. addition to what Trevor just got, which yeah. is the ones we're chasing. There yeah. was a couple that I had advanced to um, Chris Nolan okay. earlier that is probably in your probably packet. In our packet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was for one band and I think yeah. some farm equipment okay. um, is, is within. So if if you can give your seal of approval Absolutely. to those yep. um, and just yeah. let us know. We're that doing it. Exactly. Um, we've also, been running. Also, it's not going to be arguing about the print of the but I'm going to call you later. Uh, Chris, um, oh, somebody's. Oh, no, she needs to send her money in. I'm not going to kiss her ass anymore. And stuff is not Chris, muted. Can you mute that, please? Can you mute? Stan? All set. Thank you. Appreciate it. My name is Rocky Foley. I also am on the 350th Parade Committee. I just want to make people aware that I put out signs today. I saw all that. over town. They look great. Uh, yes, showing, uh, telling the date, the time, and also the parade route. Great. So you might, uh, people will see those popped up and that's great. All over town, both ends of town. And really and, exciting. And actually, I want to thank Kevin because Kevin has had the, um, at the at the transfer station, has had the sign the blinking sign going so hopefully people are aware there's a couple more weeks yep we wanted to wait on our signage until after memorial day yeah. we just thought it was appropriate to For sure absolutely get, get through one parade yeah um, and so <laughs> celebration yeah security wise um please know that i have secured the Comtic valley memorial associations no parking per the order of Deerfield Police Department signs that we use for the craft fair oh okay and uh the cones so right. um sidewalks and streets that are need to be closed off at yeah. the intersections will be supplemented with all of that that's equipment great equipment donated thank you. or lent to us by pbma well, that's wonderful so and, a huge and, thank you to them yep, yeah. yep for sure 
And um, Rocky and I have had um, a meeting and we're going to have a follow-up next Monday, right? Uh, yeah. Monday afternoon. Safety okay. meeting. A safety meeting with the heads of highway department, um, South County, police. fire, police, yeah. um, and um, they've been all incredibly great to work with and very good. cooperative and given us really good suggestions. That's as well. great. That's super great. Well, I, I, I want to be very very pleased that everyone is working together well and I'm really looking forward to a good time and just reach out if there's anything you need and we'll, and we'll will, advertise for volunteers. yeah we'll try to get some volunteers together yeah, for yeah. put yeah. out on our network networks to, and I also wanted to announce that uh, BassDOT says that they're going to start working on the grass around the new sidewalks on Sugarloaf Street on the sixth weather permitting so that doesn't mean the grass will be grown by then, but uh, at least the the potholes and stuff around the sidewalks will be filled in. So that'll be nice. The sidewalks are beautiful. Yeah, it is so nice. It Isn't is. It? Yeah, it's, it's very really nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. Long Finally. time coming. Yeah. Long time coming. We got more to come. Now yeah. we got more. Yeah, exactly. Now we've got more sidewalks yeah. to work on, but we'll yeah. do it piece by piece. Any other questions? No, no, I just keep we'll, keep in touch if you need anything. Yes. We want to help. We and and uh, do you feel comfortable coming one more time? Our next meeting is um June fourteenth, so it would it, we could we'll be, here. Only, we'll be here. We be here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And if you if you've got more important stuff to do, this isn't super right. Fun, but right? it's just but we'll it would here. be nice yeah. to have That'd you come and give an update okay. and. Yeah, if you're that, still yeah, any last minute years. things you need. Just yeah, that week know. we're meeting every night, so we'll okay. we'll be in the building. All right, perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, thank, thank you, you for thank you very much appreciate for coming. It. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming up, Rocky. Yeah. To no pool uh, poll hearing. No, there's not a pool poll hearing, um, okay. and it is six thirty. So yeah. is um Paul? Paul, Paul, would you like to come up? Welcome a second time. Hi. Thanks for making the time to come again. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. I'm doing all right. Good. So, Paul, why don't you give us some background and then um, we'll see what we can do. Well, I'm here to discuss um, Pine Nook Road and the safety of it. And I've asked that I be given a spec sheet on what the standards for that road are supposed to be. Um, so that's what I was hoping to receive. I noticed uh, they've done a lot of work on it in the last two weeks, so um, somebody must have done some research on it. Um, I, I used to call and, you know, just voice my opinion about needing some service up there and service up there, but uh, a little confrontation with Chris Miller the last time was the last straw for me. Um, I don't like being insulted, and um, so I thought I would push this a little harder this time. I know I've talked with Trevor several times yep. um, in the past. Yeah. Um, I was told by a, well, I was told by Trevor that my road is very low, low priority. Oh, uh, I didn't say that. Um, if you check your emails, I think you'll say you did, because I was awful surprised that you did. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I would... So my point is that it's not five and ten or Sugarloaf Street, so it's low traveled. Right. But so it's probably the one of the last places you go if there's a storm. They go hit the main roads first. I think that's probably what I was. Well, after mentioning. the last storm that we had, three weeks had passed and nothing had been cleaned up. Nothing, branches, trees, everything. So on my own, yeah, I took my truck, my chainsaw. And a pair of clippers started at one end by the farm and went all the way to Eagle Park. Cleaned the whole side of them, cleaned all the brush, cleaned all the trees. You had to swerve to go around it. Mm -hmm. um, walkers, people driving by in cars thanked me, yeah. said how nice it looked. So I sent a bill and then, you know, yeah. Chris said I was too expensive and uh, I was a pain in the, you know, well, that's a personal matter, a personnel matter, and so we're not going to discuss that tonight. But 
Do you um, have specs on the road? Where are they, um, are we I, I believe we're waiting for council to, to give us the, the info on when the road was accepted and how it was accepted. Um, and, and I think she has been out this week, so I don't know if we have that. I don't know if maybe you do, Kevin. Kevin. He does. Okay. So you all have a copy of that also. Basically what this states, this is Mass DOT um, roadway inventory. Street names, Piney Milk Road. Number of lanes of travel, one. Surface pipe gravel, surface width, 14 feet. No shoulder, no shoulder, two-way traffic. That is how the state says on the roads. It is technically a municipal pipe two road. Um, so the, do you have two-way traffic, but only one way? Yeah. Two-way traffic, one lane. One lane. One lane. Wow. Which you have there. That makes it difficult. Yeah. Um, the like, post office is like refused Scotland. to deliver my mail. Well, that's because. Well, excuse me? Not true. It is true. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I beg to differ, sir. There's email from both postmasters of Old Deerfield and South Deerfield. I just got reimbursed for my box. Yeah, exactly. You were allowed to get a free box. Yep. That's exactly what that email says. Right, because they wouldn't bring... No, that is not why. Yes. No, I, I'm not going to say it in our area. Well, I, I I'm went to the... telling you what the sir, postmaster sir, said. The, the email is quite clear. So um, we will get back to you on um, when we have more research done, legal research done. Um, so we can have a path forward, recommend a path forward at this point, um, because we don't have enough information on um, on the road, um, the status of the road. So um, have the, I think the issue, right, is that you'd like to see it well, more maintained better. And that's fair. That's a fair complaint. And um, and so I think my request to have this is to hear from you again in public on record so we could gather your information and then and then we have been on the on the background asking council for more information like what is the responsibility what is the specs of the road what are we like you know what are we responsible to do and what are we not you know responsible to do and then how do we go forward to find a um a, you know a, a good finding out of this i i I have always, we don't own much up there other than the road. And I've always, we've talked a lot back and forth about, you know, parking. People park on the sides of the road. They come from all over because it's a beautiful place to hike. And they hiked up the road and stuff. And I, in conjunction with other work that we want to do for Pine Nook, uh, sewer going up through and re redoing the culverts and redoing the roads, you know, once you get to that very tight top of the hill, it would be... I was hoping to talk with the nonprofits and say, is there a chunk of land that we could get a gravel parking lot so people could be off the road and then could walk the road from there or walk the trails from there? We don't own any of that, but I was hoping that they would, once we do, you know, all this work going up through, would they be open to that, which would alleviate, you know, everybody parking on the sides and making it difficult to go through, because I know that's been a an issue of yours as well as people. The town of Deerfield owns a 17 acre lot just past my house. Right. Good place for parking. Yeah. Takes it away from the corner. Are you in the middle or at the end of the street? He's about kind of in the middle. Yeah. He's about... Any of you ever been on that road? I, I've, heard, I've driven over it several times with the highway department and the police chief. And I was just, I don't know where you live, so I was asking. Uh, oh, I'm the big brick house, yeah. uh, dead middle of the Good. from River Road to uh, wonderful. Uh, that's that's great. I I just was asking yep. I, a point of information, and uh, yeah, I, I agree, Trevor. You know, um, make a good point, and we need to figure out a better way to to address issues. I I, I suspect, like EverSource, um, the town has a list of this road has to be cleared first, this road has to be cleared second, this road can be cleared after the emergency declaration is over i i you know i you can't have everybody get the same response at the same moment when you but have a limited resource if, if so you i want to say thank you for going out and doing the work you did yeah. and um i'm sorry that uh, you felt you needed to present a bill to the town but uh, i i can understand frustration behind that uh decision 
and I'm new to this, so this is the first time I've come up with the Thayer Road issue. So uh, the other day I went to pick up a cube of bricks because that's my profession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bricks were put on the back of my truck, shrink wrapped and everything. I have a picture on my phone of what they looked like when I got home. They were damaged? They were all tipped over, all broken up, mm -hmm. just simply trying to travel the road. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking for. I mean, brakes, mufflers, everything. The road is just usually in just terrible, terrible, terrible shape. Where the, where the tire ends coming from Hilltop Farm, <laughs> there was a pothole there, four feet by six feet, five inches deep. It's been since graded. All of a sudden things are getting done, but that pothole will be back again in a couple of <laughs> weeks. So they don't, they don't fix it. They just sober, grade over it. And you know, when people come off the tire, boom, it's right there. And it's over and over and over and over. Would you want it all? I mean, what are you looking to have it paved? It can't be paved. Right. I mean, it's not going to hold do up you, paved. Do, does the town realize that that's a scenic road? Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, it was yeah. passed as a scenic yeah. road. So any trees that are cut or anything like that have to go to meeting. Um, um, Joan, Joan Hemingway did that years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to get more research done. And we'll find out what we can and cannot do, and um, and we'll try to come with a plan. Okay. Okay. This, that's all I'm looking for. Yep. I appreciate okay. you coming in. Thank you. Let us know how you're feeling and what we can do. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> if I may, just so that way everybody else that's out in TV land knows what's going on, uh, we have approximately 15 roads, 15 miles of dirt roads. And yes, we prioritize which roads get done first. It's not because of a letter. It's not because of political pressure of why that road is being done now. It's because we finally had time to do it. We do our roads major once a year. We'll go through, we do a major grading, we scour it, we, we, we treat it with a magnesium, and then we rent a roller and we roll all of our dirt roads. We do this once a year. Sometimes we do it twice a year. Other towns, all they do is grade. So that is the reason why it's been done now. Again, you know, you're looking at basically the road for the most part is probably close to 20 feet wide. There's going to be some tight areas, but all of the tight areas are more than the 14 feet, which is what DOT says. So uh, we're doing the best we can with what we got. And unless somebody wants to come up with a boatload of money to go ahead and pave that. Uh, I don't know what to do. You know, um, literally, you'd be talking well over a million dollars. Easy. I know. Um, just the simple fact is you can't, you, you would have to put down a decent base. You would have to go through, even if I was just to put down tar and stone, um, it, it's still going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars that, to be honest with you, um, the other roads in town, you, I can't just go ahead and, and grade a, a Grave Street or Eastern Ave. You know, I have to pay that. And I get zero money, zero from the town for paving. The only money I get for paving is from the state. So if the town would like to donate more money to a fund, I can get more paving done. But well, I only get so much money. Now, just so you're aware, last year when we did River Road, that was three years worth of savings. Yeah. $156,000 a mile is what it cost us. Mm -hmm. And that was just an overlay. That's nothing else. So I just want everybody to be well aware of that, you know, well, we're, Kevin, we're not jumping through hoops because of political pressures or, or letters. It's just time. Well, we'll just... I think so. we can, we'll try to find a happy medium of trying to figure out what we can do to, to make it better. Yeah. Always try to, we can always do better. So we'll, we'll try to do that and figure out where, what our responsibilities are and what we need to do. If I, if, if I might. You uh, can. Um, I noticed that they put in a culvert yep. just, um, just beyond north of my house. Right. Okay. They dug it out, put a pipe across. Now there's a big hole there. There's two green traffic cones. Is something going to be done with that to make it safer? I'm sure. I'm sure. When, when was this done? Like a couple of weeks ago, I think. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's been a couple of weeks. They haven't even been up there a couple of weeks. Anyway, uh, 
I will make sure it's written and taken care of. Okay. And another thing is when I built my house, the town required, John Kelleher required me to put in a catch basin and a culvert underneath my driveway. And rather than just do a kind of a Mickey Mouse job with it, I built a catch basin, bought a cover, put it on. Yeah. Um, I noticed that when they were up scraping the sides, they uncovered one end and then covered the other. But I think the cover, the culvert going through is plugged because of, it's never been done before. Really. Right. Um, okay. You know, so I mean, and Chucky Williams, who built next to me, put in a pipe underneath his driveway. So we've tried to maintain, Manage try to keep the water to go the way it's supposed keep it flowing. to. Everything yep. like that it just doesn't run down my driveway and out into the town road. Right. Um, okay. But, you know, those things I don't think are my responsibility to maintain because the town required me to get my building permit to put it in. Okay. And John came up and inspected it and said it yep. was fine. And stuff like that. And that's the kind of stuff I just wanted to understand. What yeah. what was responsible, who was responsible, what what we needed to do, just so I had a, a baseline. Because I'm not a road engineer, a million other things I have to do as well. But um, I understand your concerns. We want to try and help. Well, it's just, you know, one, it's safety. And two, it's just, I'm tired of banging up and down that road, banging up and down that road. Now, if in fact the road is of a lesser standard mm -hmm. let's say and doesn't get only maybe one year one time maintenance yep. during the year am i allowed to apply for a rebate on my taxes no no no, no. Hmm. i mean you people choose where they want to build right you know i mean you uh -huh. you live in that place because it is gorgeous and private and you know it's a, a rural dirt road so it's not going to be like a nice paved driveway going up and down that road it just isn't and that's, you know, so we make those choices in life where we want to be and what we want to do. And so, no, you can't get a rebate on taxes because the road is rough, but it's going to be rough. It's not, it's a dirt road. So, but could it be better? Yes. And let's do what we can to make it better for you. Right. And are we going to stay on top of this or is it going yeah. to be a, a one? Well, no, I think no, I'm going to have to call and say, listen, you no. should, you should always stay involved. You should always be a part of, of your local government. You should always come to meetings. You should always talk about what's important to you. It takes a village to run this town. It's not just us volunteering, you know, multiple nights constantly on a million different ideas. You know, it's, I, this is a major issue for you. And there's a million other that we deal with constantly. So it's important to keep in front, to talk about it, to come to meetings and because we get overwhelmed with a million things to do. So if, you know, it, it's in my mind, we think about it, but it's important to be a civic engagement in your, in your local government. So yes, come talk about it. And it's also, we have to have clarity from our lawyer what we can and cannot do. So we'll try to figure out a plan to go forward, okay? okay. When we figure, yeah. hear from her, all right? Uh, and you will get back to me? Uh, we yeah. will We will get back to you. Somebody sure. from the town will definitely be in touch with yeah. you. And the good news is Natalie Blay is trying to work on um, rural dirt road right. legislation in the current 193rd uh, Congress, Congress. Congress um, to get more funds for rural communities to handle road maintenance for dirt roads. So, um, you know, you might reach out to her too. You know, be good. I know Natalie very well. Yeah. Yeah. She's, 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 she's working great hard on that. For the town. that yep. So I just wanted to I make you aware that she's working on it as well. What I don't like is now. I've made an enemy, so to speak. No, 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 well, no never an enemy. You can't. You can't I wait to a highway truck today going by, coming up my road, and the kid I know well did yeah. not wave back. Well, and he would. Sun always... was in his eyes, Paul. What's that? The sun was in his eyes. Well, we might. Say that. <laughs> Paul, we all have to work together. Yeah. But no enemies. Nat Thank you Natalie for coming is in. working on it. Okay. Um. And Alice, while I'm here. Kevin, thank you. Yep. Um. Is there any, before Kevin leaves, is there anything that we want Kevin to talk about? Sidewalks. No. Sidewalks. Yeah. Tuesday at 11.36 a.m. I finally got everything back from the engineer. Okay, great. Casey has a copy of it, and it's already been sent up to Thank you. 
Andrea Woods for uh, getting put out the bed. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, I just want to make sure that before we jump off and start doing work, that you tell us what your intentions of work are and what the RFP says. Uh, the scope of work, I, I requested it be this way you guys have the entire packet. Right. Uh, and so it's you, got the scope yeah. of work that's in there. It basically states that the, the highway department will be removed. Once we figure out how far they'll go, the mm -hmm. highway department will remove it. But then after that, that's up to them to go ahead and um, do final grading, compaction, and then um, asphalt. The areas where there's going to be concrete will be where it meets uh, a roadway. Um, it has to have the uh, detection uh, pads Yellow installed pads. in those, very similar to like they did on Sugarloaf Street. Right. Um, so basically, when you look at the, the south end of Sugarloaf Street, that's basically what it's going to look like. Um, you know, uh, we would be going in behind afterwards after they do the sidewalk and we'd be doing the restorations, things like that. Um, the grass stuff and filling in. Exactly. So um, my, my only concern is that what end of town are you going to start on? You, this is North Main Street, right? Well, actually what it is, it's South Main Street in front of the Polish Club. Okay. Because we're looking at that. Right. I'm also going to include a, a Cape Cod berm. So that way, if somebody's there, they're actually going to recognize the fact that they're driving onto a prop, onto a site. Thank you. That's been Thank a major issue. You know, we're, we're not really going to go into the center of town because I talked about going further. But the problem is, as soon as I do that, as soon as I get to that four-way intersection, oh, as soon as I touch yeah. one corner, that entire intersection has to be completely ADA compliant. And it needs right. to. So that's <laughs> why I'm staying away from plan. Now, that's why I've gone to starting basically here at Conway Street, coming to Town Hall, and then both sides as far as I can go. So you're talking about North Main Street is what I'm trying to get yeah. to. Yes, okay. correct. My, my problem is I don't think it's a good idea to start at this end of North Main Street because the whole North Main Street on the opposite side yeah. needs to be designed by a landscape engineer who can tell us we can put grass back in here. We might have to do something about... Uh, the width of the road, et cetera. I think it's a much smarter idea to start at the, even though people will will wonder why, sure. at the end where there's no problems, right. North Main Street at the other end of town mm -hmm. and work toward the center of town. I'm all over Because you're probably going to get a lot more distance right. with less headaches sure. and leave the center of town until we can figure out what we're doing there because we're going to have to engineer the library park uh, sidewalks Probably some of the stuff, if we get any 1888 building progress. I was just going to say we have the hopefully. 1821 progress. I didn't think of that. All of those things need to be done that, that in concert. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation would be to focus on the north end and the work north way south. Sure, and certainly. Because that's all clear. There's already grass there. Right. There's already, you know, a path. And um, I don't know what these guys or you are going to be able to do about the large trees and their roots that. Go you can't, there. Well, you're going to have to go around them. We're going to have to go up over the top of them right. because otherwise we're going to end up killing the trees. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, and then you have to be cautious because how much of a rise you're going to do. Right. Because now ADA. I'm running out of ADA compliance because exactly. I'm running at too much of a pitch. Yeah. Which in turn, you know, so so it's going to be on. And, and I, I went through the RFP pretty good when it talked about the scope of work. And it basically lays all that responsibility on the contractor. Mm -hmm. Once Once the town removes the product out, they are required to build a a a ADA compliant sidewalk. Okay, so I think that's a, a good plan. Yeah, I, I think will, that's a great idea. Start at the north end, work my way south. I, I'll I'll read the RFP. I I just don't want to get to the point where the 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 contract goes out and they think they're working in one place and we want them to work in another sure. place. Um, you well, know, if that's I, the case, then 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 I'll have to reach back out to Andrew. Unfortunately. It, it we went there yesterday. yesterday. So, <laughs> and with that being said, you know, um, I'm sure I can go ahead and change it again. Yeah. Um, they might so be this, able this to... will be the fourth revision I've done to this. That's why it's <laughs> so long. It's out. I'm sorry. sorry. So, and, no, don't be it sorry. You know, I, I, no I, I want to do this once. Yeah, yeah better I, before than after. Do it again. You know, and that did concern me on this end heading north because yeah. it's it's asphalt yeah. alley, yeah. you know, and, and talking about putting in, you know, so... You know, now we're kind of up in the air, you know, we're talking about changing up the sidewalk, what are we going to do in front of the library, we were going to go ahead and try and take one of the flashing beacons for the crosswalk there. Right. But if all that's going to be pulled out, what are we going to do with that? Because that's a grant. So we're going to have to put it in, it's got to be tearing back out again, be put back in again. And right. It's, it's possible. It's, 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 you know, I'm, I'm just 
It's possible that you can coordinate that. Raising, I'm not allowed to input. So. The library does have a basic design now where we know where the parking lot is. Sure. And maybe there is a way to engineer that and put in the, mm -hmm. the flashing light and with the realization that, you know, um, you're only going to do a partial, like you Sorry. have the ADA compliant uh, entrance mm -hmm. up to the sidewalk. Um, but that's the much more cumbersome end of the town. And I right. just thought it would be easier for us to think about that a little more. Whereas the other end, you might get quite a run. All right. And so basically, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say from Pleasant Street North. Period. Where, where is Pleasant? I, I, but that's where the elementary school, school is. The elementary school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 From there north. Yeah. Because I think that's probably a, that's a good stretch, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. It's definitely a good but, stretch. Oh, yeah. And that way it gives us time to re-engineer. Yeah, whether it's Berkshire Design or somebody else yeah. that's working with us because they've mm -hmm. already done the engineering the common. And it's just a complicated, the center of town is complicated and you get one chance to make it look good. Oh, I agree. You know, and that that's why you have to have a master plan to say, this is what we're going to do and exactly. this is how we're going to do it. Well, and stop changing our mind and move forward with Berkshire it. Berkshire Design so, was to be yeah. consistent so, in the look. Right. No, yeah. I agree. I agree. And, you know, because I'd love to be able to do something with Elm Street, you know. Um, yes, it, it it's looks an like amazing drive need. town. It's it's industrial city is what it looks like to me. Yeah. And it yeah. needs um, it needs cement sidewalks. Yeah. You know, and in, in there. But once again, no, let's start thinking about this now. OK, cement sidewalk four feet from the end of that to the business. Some places you're talking almost 60 feet. Who's going to be responsible for that? We can't do stuff on somebody else's property because we well, can't we'll, spend money, town money on theirs. We'll design it. Like so so I, I'm Bruce just trying Barrington to make sure everybody's well aware. Field. Because Carol and I went went round and round about this probably three years ago. And and, oh, yeah. and I tried to explain is look at this is what we're responsible for and the rest. You know, we can we can make everything look beautiful, but from the edge of that sidewalk over, depending on, you know, we gotta work. I don't know, I don't think there's still a business association anymore. No. You know, it'd be nice if there was, and then maybe everybody can come together and, and figure it out. Right. We're going to do some stuff on on um, the Leary lot, so we can try and bring that up right. at the same time. Because right. I'd like be to good see because that. again, you know, as far as I know, we don't even have permission to cut anybody's alley yet. Either, right. So. I know right. exactly. You know, I was looking at that issue today, and I was saying, well, we're going to build a sidewalk along the access road. So if that's the only legal way that people can get in and out of there, it's going to make some difficulty. Mm -hmm. More people accessing businesses, they're either going to have to walk to one end of the lot or the other end of the lot. Right. Um, but that was one of the issues I think we were Pro intending to talk to the the Leary lot folks about. Um, Ma, you had your hand raised. I'm sorry, I didn't see you right away. You're muted. Mute. You're muted, Ma. Unmute. Um, okay, I'm unmuted. Go. Sorry. Um, anyhow, I just quickly wanted to mention um, the appointment of the uh, Energy Committee people. We sent you all a letter a couple of times and an appointment of the Energy Committee to the, or four members of the Energy Committee to the Franklin County Re -Ener Regional Energy, whatever that's called. It's yeah. anyhow. So, so Emma, uh, we'll, we'll, We'll definitely talk about that when it comes up on the agenda, but we're talking about the sidewalks here. So do you have something? No, I, I just I was going to go and eat my dinner. I just wanted to remind you, if it's on the agenda, that's terrific. It's and I'm happy and I'll go away. Okay. All right. Good night. See you all later. Good Thank night. you, M.A. <laughs> all right. It's not on the agenda. Sorry. It's not. We can talk about yes. it. Yes. Okay. You can talk about it. Good. Yeah. Um, item not anticipated. Uh, we'll bring up. Thank you, Ma. Okay. So, Good night. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. No. Yeah. No. And no Rob. And like I said, you know, whatever you guys want to do. I mean, it's yeah. it's you know, it's collective on as the town is as a, how they want it to look. You know, by no means is is this a this is what Kevin wants. You right. Know, by by any means. You know, I I would love to see all all concrete, but I know we just can't afford it. Mm -hmm. You know, and unless. Does the uh, does the RFP is it looking at just the the flat um, asphalt like they did on the the it, it'll 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 look it'll be it'll be exactly what they did where they completely rip it all out right they put in and two then layers. new gravel new everything then there's going to be a base base coat uh, there'll, there'll be because because I have to figure this has to be able to withstand a piece of equipment on top of it 
Right. And the way I look at it, the piece of equipment is probably going to be the loader. So it's, it's going to have basically the same thickness as the roadway. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit shyer, but for the most part, you know, instead of three inches and, and two inches, it's probably going to be two inches and maybe an inch and a half. So, and what I mean, the difference is, is the first is what they call a binder right, or, right. or the base, right. you know, which is, it's, uh, the aggregate is more in there, which, which gives it more body to it. Right. And then, and then the other one's got more of a sand to it, which gives you more of a smoother finish. Right. So, so the second number I use is the smooth finish. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's definitely going to have to be thick enough to make sure that, like I said, literally I can drive a loader on it and not crack it because if we've got a problem all of a sudden I have to cross the sidewalk and I, and I want to make sure that we're not going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, and was it, it it's just, it's the flat that's that's the thing i want to because we had talked about stamped at some point and i don't know that that's a oh, good idea I, i'll be honest the, the stamping was not even put into yeah what was excuse me i'm trying to let it again well we were that was not put into the rfp simple. i mean that that's a very specialized yeah um, to be honest with you and that would a yeah well work. you know i'd love to be able to say a it slows it down i know it definitely would cost more money oh but, yeah I don't know how much more we slow it down, you know. So maybe that's something that could be I, I think looked into afterward. I think what the mass dot did looks good, and the people that live there seem to think it looks, you know, work. It, it. I've been walking on it for the, you know, with my wife for the past, you know. I, I said it was quality control, but I sure. just wanted to go out and, yeah, and, and certainly. Everybody seems to be very positive about it. So, I uh, and I noticed in other towns that mass dot and even the other towns are are basically the default now is asphalt in, in non-visible public visible areas right like along the uh, power canal and turners they did a brand new installation of fixing that whole crossway from the bridge mm -hmm. and it's, it's all asphalt and and uh, it's you, you get more more bang for your buck yeah i mean um and i'm sorry i hate to ask but in because i was i was on my actually i was on email looking at something um did you say you got an answer out of somebody from district two about filling in Adam Sockle, I, I wrote an, a note to you and, and the right. chief and, and um, Casey, and then Adam Sokolowski, I guess the chief had him respond. I can forward it to you. Okay, so yes. so I reached out to District 2, mm -hmm. and the only guy that answers the phone for me, TJ, and he said that he was going to get an answer for me, and that okay, was well that, two days ago. It, it could be that um, Sok Adam Sokolowski mentioned... Uh, I don't know if he talked to the, is it Warner Brothers? It's the contractor mm -hmm. on right. that. I think he said something about talking to them. And okay. they said that they were going to start the work on the 6th of June or 6th or 7th of oh, June. Okay, well, that, that's but, great. But I'll follow. He would know because they'd have to have a detail. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That, that, that's, yeah. So that'd be, the, just be good for the, for the parade. That email to no, that'd done. be fantastic. Yeah. Because no, uh, in that way, I can just let TJ know when he gets in touch. With Kevin, this. we apparently did not vote on the transfer station sticker. So we're going to keep the sticker the same as $70. And we're move, increasing the bags to $28 from $25. Just, is that going to be? That's correct. Okay. And, yeah. and so the seniors will still get a small roll of bags with the purchase of a sticker. Right. Yes. If they prefer, they to have a large the bag difference. instead of a small bag. So the sticker cost will be seventy dollars. Yes. The credit for the small bags will be seventeen. Right. The additional costs will be eleven dollars for a total of eighty-one dollars. If the senior wants to go there, buy a sticker and, and exchange that. their small bag for a large bag. Yep. But the senior bags or the small bags are going to stay the same. The second sticker is going to stay the same at $10 and the sticker cost itself same at, right. at $70. Right. Yep. So, like I, it's perfect. Perfect, Normally. Kevin. Um, this should be going I just wanted to make second. sure that we were clear on that. Yeah. Okay. So you want to make a motion? Yeah. To, uh, I, I guess so. To uh, adopt the sticker. Uh, and uh, bag prices uh, as recommended by Kevin Scarborough. I'll second that motion. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you. So we Thanks. took care of that. Um, thank you, Kevin, very much. And for anybody that's and, oh, who, questioning and how, about what, what's the senior age? Because someone called me and 65. I do not know. What is it, 70 or 65? I thought it was 65. 65. 65. 65. Yeah. I can okay. guarantee because got one year to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just because there's a lot of people been asking about when sticker sales are going to be going on. Um, sticker sales will be as soon as I get my the, the laptop 
the laptop will be here on the 6th. So basically the 8th of June, we can start selling stickers. Okay. Um, and the reason why is because before we used to have to. And where, will, and then where they, will they be sold, Kevin? Can you they, just they mention will, that? Stickers will be sold uh, preferably at the transfer station Yeah. on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, you can go online and purchase them, um, but it's going to take a little bit because the way we have it set up now is, is if you go ahead and do it online, the town clerk every Friday will go ahead and forward the information to me. I will go ahead and, and add it into my database, and then we will mail out your sticker. That is how that will work. Okay. Um, I'm just going to reiterate. And there's no buying stickers at Town Hall. Correct. Um, reiterate again, June 6th, which June. is Tuesday, we'll start the nope, selling nope, of the... No, no, no. June 8th. That's, okay. June 8th. Oh, June 8th. That's when the computer's coming in. Right. You need oh. to program it because the only thing that's going to be on this is Excel, period. Everything okay, so else is be Thursday... So Thursday, Thursday, June eighth is the first time that you can buy stickers, and they will be sold from June eighth, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Correct. From and, then on, and as soon as the at the, the at the transfer station. Correct, and we'll go ahead and we'll put that up at the transfer stations. Uh, okay. Thank you. Kevin. But I needed to make sure that I got the blessing on this before I yeah posted it. Nope, that's good. Thank you. So cool. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Have a good Thank night. Thank you, Kevin. Cool. I'm Very sorry good. that we forgot to vote yep. it last week. Have a good night. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, select board um, announcements. I just want to say thank you very much, Trevor and Tim, for going to the Memorial Day um, events. Yeah, yeah it we, was lovely. We had a great time. Jim yeah. and I walked good, in. And, good uh, walking together. I wanted to thank, um, you know, I, I really just want to extend our thank you from the board and the town to John Sizz for know, 30 years of, of working on the Has Memorial Day. I think it's been 30 years he's been working on that. He's done it every year that I've been here. So that's yes. at least one. So. Yeah, he, he's amazing. And they have a good crew. He's got he's got good lieutenants lined up to go. So um, that you know, the, there was talk about maybe uh, getting back to doing the parade from Frontier to the Common, as, as everybody loved that. So they're, they're work, the committee's working on you know what that would look like and can that happen um but the parades around to the cemeteries that memorial service was great i know kathy belanger said this was her last year and then when we got to da she you know might have changed her mind because you know just the young kids came up and said that you know her speech is memorial day for them and it really and it is it just we've heard from her for you know unfortunately for her but we've heard for her from her for 17 years and it's um pretty special part of the service and um She's just an amazing, amazing lady. So great job. Good time. Yep. It's fun to see everybody out there. Else? Um, let's see. Anything else? I don't think so at the moment. There's just okay. a lot going on behind the scenes. <laughs> I know everyone's really busy. Um, well, I would just uh, gonna say that Casey and Denise and Alice uh, have Rich. been working yeah. on the uh, one stop and it's gonna probably go in tomorrow. Um, and uh, it's first on my list. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so we. Is it a multi million dollar well, one? Oh, it's, it, it reaches up to about a million. Just about a million. One. Okay. And, um, you know, I think it's a great package and they've done a lot of good work on it. So thank, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully keep our fingers crossed on that. Yeah. Board of Health um, announcements. We've um, got a new virus to look at. Oh, yeah. The James. Did you hear about that? The new virus? Yeah. yeah. Would you like to talk? No, about I do not want okay. to talk. I don't, I'm just going to ignore it for at least okay. a week. All right. <laughs> um, regular trapping for the, right now, the James Canyon virus is where there is trapping for is right now. Um, and that is a pilot program that we're participating in as a member of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District. Regular trapping of our mosquitoes is going to... Um, be start on June 5th this year. The reason why is we've had cooler nights dry, and it's been so dry, there really isn't uh, a lot of mosquitoes around. I mean, there are mosquitoes, but yep. not the bad kind, just the nuisance kind. There's bad kinds and there's nuisance kinds yep. and the melanores are not out. And so that's, and they're the ones that carry just about everything. So that's really wonderful news actually. Yep. So, oh, but the ticks are wicked bad. Yes. Please make sure that you do tick checks. We still are subsidi have subsidized tick 
testing available through, um, it's not the UMass lab anymore. It's a, Dr. Rich has um, started his private lab, but it does state testing. And that's actually who's doing the James Canyon mosquito testing for us um, through the CDC. So um, we're, you know, it's good to know what disease loads are happening in our mosquito uh, in our ticks. So if you are bitten, please send it in. It's peace mm -hmm. of mind. Yep. Um, moving on, uh, we did the transfer station. Um, the Human Rights Planning Committee, um, one of the things that I was thinking of um, is it, it's really hard to spend so much time talking about stuff. So I was wondering if we could meet next week and have another short meeting, Zoom meeting, um, and talk about, I was hoping that Casey might be able to cannibalize. Not Wednesday, but I could some other night. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I also, it, Casey and I, when I came down to, to speak with Casey about the, you know, understanding what was on the agenda tonight, um, it occurred to me that, you know, one resource we might use is the personnel committee to work on, you know, I think one of the things that Casey would like to see is sort of developing a, a process for you know i don't know well, vetting, I was, I vetting, was, uh, yeah application. vetting volunteers yeah. application yeah yep. in, in the short term you know we've got this new committee we'd like to get set up but um since the same sorts of things are going to arise for each each appointed board and maybe it would make sense for you know the personnel committee to help us with this rather than having casey or us trying to develop these right. things they yeah. could and I think, did you say they might be interested in helping? Yes, they are actually. They've yeah. mentioned okay. before. So what do you think so, about that? I think it's a wonderful idea. I'm I'm fine with that. And especially since Trevor can't meet on next Wednesday. Yeah. I, I actually, I have, this is my one clear night. Make sure I'm booked every other Wednesday. No, yeah. but it's just, <laughs> you know, no, I, just I, so. I wanted to move forward with this, no, but it makes, to, what, but it have makes we had sense. Anybody? Yeah, there's, there's several people. Oh, good. Put forward names. Wonderful. Like, and. Interestingly, I don't think any of them were on the committee that. No, they. Okay. Were all I believe people. Not. that's wonderful. Um, One thing I did want to mention, just this is off topic, but on topic, is that my friend uh, Dennis O'Rourke had, and his wife took a civil rights uh, tour of the South, and he did a really cool blog on it. Um, they spent three weeks traveling all through the South and back, and they yes. went to all the most important. They wanted to get an education on. The civil rights, even though they grew up in the era, but you know, uh, you yeah. didn't, it didn't get affected. But here, but he wants to come and do it, do a yeah. talk on it. So visited said, Selma, visited you know, yes, yeah, all those things. all of the yeah. places, all through um, Missouri and di different areas, and mm -hmm. he did a little blog on it. He said that he would come and give a little talk on it, and I thought that might be a cool thing for the committee. We could just have a little night. He said he would come and just do a, a, a just a, a quick talk on what what he found, what he saw, what was impactful. And I thought that would be yeah, You know what? Cool I, I would really love to see us do that on an off, off select night. Yeah. Or, or some night that the, yeah. you know, either the, the um, dig or and, and this group want to get together and just have yeah. a small okay. thing. Yeah. Thank you, Jake. Mm -hmm. let's, let's he said he'd be that. open to doing that. So. All right. So do we need to... Um, do we need to just authorize Casey, Casey to approach the personnel committee or? Well, we need to move ahead on it. So right. if, the, if the personnel committee has they said that they are. 12. Okay. All right. So that's good. So I can yep. add that to their agenda. With that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. That would be perfect. Um, all right. Of Next item is um, declaration of the surplus property. It's the 2018 Ford police utility that was in the accident. And um, John has proposed, I'm not sure where it is. Casey, can you just explain it so I make sure I got it right? He's gonna take the check and the trade in. He would use some of those funds from surplus property or the, the vehicle itself toward um, a new vehicle. That would be, I believe he said hybrid if I recall it correctly. Um, which will definitely help us with gas mileage. I think this is the last this is the last gasoline vehicle. Yes, I believe it is. So and that's, that's why his I, intent, the way I okay. understand it. So I would take a motion to um, declare the 2018 police 
utility um, vehicle um, as surplus. So moved. Seconded. Um, all those in favor? Kim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Franklin Regional Retirement Board added 2% cost of living adjustment. I. Um, we did that next. Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot. The, that. I, That's okay. But let's, yeah, let's, let's do this yeah, first. Do this yeah. yeah. I, um, I guess I. Uh, Gamma, I, I think Trevor, you were you were expressing some interest about getting some input, and I think that's a logical thing to do. But um, in while you were talking before the meeting, uh, I mentioned Casey. Well, what about if we got Dale Kowacki to give us sort of a static? What would the impact of this be if we had the same number of retirees and same number of employees in this system? What's what's the one year number? So in other words, twenty four thousand. You know this because because it's in the um, it's in this it's, the packet. It's in the packet. Yes, I read it. It and that's why my question was, um, and and I don't Which feel bad. Is it on? Um, I read it here somewhere. I saw it, Tim. I can't tell you exactly where it is. It was Deerfield's. It was Deerfield is is approximately 24,000 something. Oh, and Deerfield. Okay, added cost assessments for 2% for 24, five. Yep. And then- Per year, per year. And- uh, it, So that's, what I'm trying to understand is that 2% on top of what? On top of our already contribution. So what, but they vote each year, right? Don't they vote each year what it's going to be? They or vote. They the just follow. follow. Well, they oh. they vote. Go ahead, Casey. Want to just explain. a policy thing? And I sent Dale an email before the meeting started. Yeah. Um, the rest of the towns have accepted it, so we're required to do it. So all of them. Yes. So all twenty. The majority have. It had to be a majority. Um, and so my question, because I know what it is for the state, they they did something similar. It was three percent. But it was only on the first portion, a, a certain amount of earnings for a retiree. And that's my concern is I don't understand how that works. Up to 17,000 or something. That's like. what, so the state's is 13,000. Okay. The oh, of, here, this is where. So I think it's three, the 2% on the first, five, if it's the 2% on the 17,000, uh, that's what we'd be talking about. Right. Well, it's 25, 26. This is what it is mm -hmm. the year. Right. Um, but Casey said it was um, 2026 is the first. It comes in in 2026. So well, if every other town has already done it or yeah. majority, then we don't. It's just like the regional agreements. We don't have a choice. We just, I guess, we have to vote. Again. Do we have to even vote it? We could just say, hey, they already decided. Right. We don't have any voting. No, yeah, that's, he just sent me. He was watching. Must have been watching his email. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to still vote it or not even bother? Because it doesn't matter. So it's going to go ahead. We can just. I, I didn't get a chance to weigh in on it. So you got, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's already decided. It is decided, unfortunately. Okay. So um, next on the agenda. What do you think, Trevor? Do you I think you vote? should take a vote. I think, I, I guess we should probably vote and say what we feel uh, about it, even though it's already done. Um, I was just trying to understand like historical. So they vote 3% each year. Just about. And then some years they'll do too. So this will be an automatic 5% here on out. Yep. Yep. And it won't ever decrease. It won't ever increase from 5%. Is that the idea? It, is it going to be 5% or is it going to be? It's going to be the 2%. It's going to fluctuate based on what the other portion of the coal is. Yeah. This if is to help keep up with inflation. Is my So this is a one-time thing, but it's going to bubble through. It's going to bubble through. Right. It's going to continue. It's, it's, since they create this, okay, so it might be off, but I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, once this gets approved, it it goes on top of whatever their regular pool is. Kind of like we have steps. Right. That's the way it sits in my head. I might be wrong, but that's kind of how I was but, parsing it. Yeah. And it's, it's whatever they normally vote. Right. Plus which, just 2%. Plus the two percent on this, the first seventeen thousand. 
but it doesn't actually matter anymore because it's enough towns have already right voted enough it, towns so, have done yeah. it. So, so I guess I'm just trying to understand now that, now that it's been decided. Does yeah. that mean that if this is not a one-time thing? Correct. This no. is not for fiscal year 26. There's going to be a two percent bump, and the next year it's it's not going to be two percent on top of right the the normal right cola. This is going to be going it's going to make bump the cola from three point whatever it is to five point whatever it is mm -hmm. yep. every year yep potentially depends on what they normally would be yeah because cola like for instance our cola this year was three percent but in the past it's been anywhere from one and a half to three percent and they they've listed um 24 000, you know for fy 26 right. 25 for the next year 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 it goes up yeah, but that says additional 3.4% each year. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to ask. It's not like so in, in, in 26, does that mean that they had a COLA and we're adding 2%, but in 27, they're just doing the additional 3.4%? Or is, it, um, is this additional 3.4% a projection that it's that's a projection. effectively what it's going to be when we raise the yeah, I, I just don't understand. Yeah, it says a, a one-time increase of the cola of an additional two percent. Right, so that's once up to up to the cola base of seventeen thousand. Right, use data and to, result. Part of this has to do with them reaching their goal of being fully funded by two thousand thirty-four. Right, two. So it's a one-time two percent increase, and then it reverts to whatever the cola is that they pick each year. Yeah. It just bumps them up, so everything just yeah, kind of keeps bump going. Over the years. And really, that if you look at the percentage is applied to a time. Uh, I forget what the added cost to assessments for Deerfield. Um, I'm just trying to get to Deerfield. Um, this is planned through that 2034, so this is tied to them being fully funded for OPEP. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what is I I'm, I should know this, but I don't. Um, public employees like school teachers they pay into a state system. They do and, separate, separate, right? And and they um, if they make IRS uh, you know if they make Social Security payments through another job or something they they get their I their Social Security gets debited based on whatever their mm -hmm. state pension is, but. What about the medical side of things? Because I think my my aunt used to be a teacher. Does do they have a, a medical benefit that they accrue as well going forward? When they retire, there's I don't know what the personnel manual for FRS says. Right. But they retire they can retire and get a certain percentage that they have to pay into the town to Right, to until they reach a certain age. Or pay into FRS. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the percentage is. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's around 70. Yeah. Um, but that's separate from what happens through retirement. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I, I, I understand why they want to do this and they, they want to, you know, this OPEB issue is for everyone a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying that, you know, on, on, some, on some level, if you get a, if you as a public servant have the ability to buy medical insurance at a reduced rate between when you retire and when you're, eligible for medicare that's a benefit that other people don't have true like i've been paying you know close to fifteen thousand dollars a year for 10 years right because i retired at 55 right uh, for my private insurance and so you know I, yep. I i understand that these folks also probably in the private sector would get paid more so it is a balance yeah you know, uh, yeah they're they're great public servants so no doubt so i will take a motion to approve this then? I'll make the motion to approve a 2% um, uh, adjustment at COLA for the um, FRRS. Is that it? Franklin okay. Reef Retirement System employee. The, uh, I'll second that motion. <laughs> Whatever I just said. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's already happened. Mm -hmm. um, One thing I just, before we vote, I just, uh, Chris, or after we vote, it doesn't matter. Uh, Chris, could you um, just Baby sent a message to, um, I had uh, Chris send the info to the finance committee just because letting him know that we're looking at this as well. So maybe just send a message just stating that we voted it 
last night because it was already a done deal. We had no say in it. Uh, sure. Yeah, make sure you emphasize that enough towns had already voted. Yeah. So it didn't really matter. Yeah. Will do. Thank you. Absolutely. Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn S. I. Thank you. Um, approval of the townwide speed limit. Um, Unless otherwise posted. So it's on any road that is not posted. Posted. Or any section of road that's not posted. Um, and you have that part of it, unless otherwise posted, is important in the vote. It yeah. makes it kind of like so like in Greenfield, when you go um when you go uh over near Cheapside and you pull onto Cheapside Street, the first thing you see is you know, these signs that say 25, or when you're about to go across the General Pierce mm -hmm. Bridge and, and instead you take a left and go into Greenfield, they have these signs that say 25. Speed limit is 25 unless otherwise posted. Let's see. And then you'll drive up the street and you'll see a 35, 35 Got it. sign. Yep. And, and so we do need to get some signs then if we do this. Yeah. Kevin's aware. Kevin and Tom are aware of that. And then obviously state roads have their own. Right. You know, um, but then the default position when somebody gets stopped and says, I didn't realize that I was going. 45 and it wasn't 45 it's well it's posted every entrance to town in every public road mm. and you know yes. here's your warning now you're aware warning yeah now the next time you know especially if it used to be posted at a, at a certain speed right i know a town that took the posting down oh that's confusing yeah took the other posting the, like the, took the speed limit posting down right well, the idea is to get some safety in town, and yeah. people are driving that's fast. Why, that's why they made this one of them. And the Thayer Road, um, Thayer Street, yeah, Thayer Street. I mean, be useful. Yeah. Um, I did, I did say something to John while you guys were talking. Um, he's gonna, you know, those road signs that we have. Mm -hmm. He's gonna talk to Harry. Harry does a lot of those grants. Yeah, he does. He's gonna talk. It'd be to great Harry. to get one over there. I'm not stealing his thunder. He's if, gonna talk to Harry. But it's not that least, um, you would know. I know that some people don't feel it works. I think it works very well. I, I get corrected often. Me too. So um, I think it does help. And I, you know, I understand from Kevin's point, dropping a, you know, speed bumps all through there is it difficult. It's one thing if it's a small private entrance, like it's a private road, um, but on a public way, it makes it a little more difficult. Um, losing a lot of mufflers, and I mean, not not that it's you know people's fault for going too it's fast. A perfect but, road. I, don't know. I I actually just think that uh, you know crosswalks like where elementary school kids cross. Yeah, a bump is more. A bump is hey, if your muffler comes off, it's because you were going to. Do yes. It. Yep. And you know it saves right. a kid's life. That's and you're expecting that yeah. in a school zone. Right. Yeah. And and I I would think it's entirely appropriate in FRS and DES mm -hmm. um, to have bumps. Um, but as a general policy, does does the chief have a position on this? It's actually a position you would need. We would need to talk to Kevin and. Oh, you, you, you're you talking on the I'm speed a, limit. I'm not talking about bumps. Yeah, you're just about, talking the speed limit. Speed limit. The I think he had asked for, for it. That, so that conversation happened in an email, and yes, they're fine with it because it's unless otherwise posted. Right. Most of the roads have been posted, and those roads went through the MDOT evaluation system right. to determine what the, the speed right limit speed. should be, Right. which is a totally different animal right. Uh, right. from this. This does allow towns to take control over a certain amount of tra traffic control. Um, yeah. But there's other processes if you truly want to change the speed limit. And some of them are pretty complex. And we did yeah. adopt this to be able to do this exactly. at town meeting. That was the it, whole idea. Town meeting to yeah. do this. Yep. So now here we are. So if we pass the vote at town meeting to support this, then it seems like that's what the townspeople want. Yes. And so I would make a motion to um, approve the townwide speed limit, 25 miles per hour, unless otherwise posted. I would second that. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Thank you. Um, before we go on to the USDA loans, I just want to go back. I skipped the minutes. Yeah, we I actually have that. minutes. All right. Um, we have April 14th, I believe. 
Uh, yep. Uh, whoop, nope. Before that is uh, April, uh, February 6th. February 6th. Oh, yeah. okay. February so 6th. I need to get some practice on this. So I'll make a motion <laughs> to approve uh, the minutes for February 6th, 2023. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Madam. So then April 14th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as of April 14, 2023 as written. And I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Over to uh, Trevor. And then the 19th, I think, is the other one. Make a motion to approve April 19th, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 3rd, 2023 as written. And second that motion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. That was a long, long set of minutes. Yeah. Um, and there's May 17th as yep. well. Yep. Make a motion to approve May 17th, 2023, the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, I and Carolyn S. I. Oh, okay. wait a minute! Look at this. I have proof. Oh. It's in the minutes. Oh. Motion to maintain current sticker price of seventy dollars in small bundles of ten dollars and seventeen, and increase of large bags to twenty-eight. Yep. Vote seconded. I, I, I. I didn't. Honest to God, and I I'm want teasing. To it's that. fine. We can always reaffirm our votes. Reaffirm. That's right. It's, I mean, the problem arises when you vote one way and then you vote the other way. Right. right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We <laughs> all voted the same. We yes. did. <laughs> all right. I thought I, I could have sworn we voted th that. I know. I thought so too, but yeah. oh well. We do so much. It's hard to keep track. You just so. ear to the mic to the okay. Earbud. Um, <laughs> we're back to the USDA loan. Mm -hmm. Um, I will finalization. Yes. Uh, I will take a motion to sign that. Yeah. So make a motion to, um, make a motion to finalize, uh, the USDA loan documents. And that second. A bond anticipation note. No, that's, that's second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we didn't, so far I hadn't heard back from USDA that we needed to correct anything. Casey, I'm not sure. Because what you should be is signing the is the band. Yeah, I guess maybe we yeah. don't, maybe that's we just have this. Holder. This yeah. was a placeholder. Okay, good. good. Okay, because I, I was going to say I didn't have it. Check with Brenda today too, and she thought everything was yeah. good. We yeah. sent it to USDA, yes. but had not heard back that yes. they need, she thought maybe okay. they might. Yeah, we put that here in case we had to fix it. Okay, good. So the ban is the one you need to do. Okay, signing the Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve signing the bond uh, anticipation note for the wastewater treatment facility upgrades project. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Tim Milchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Okay. And I want to thank um, Sarah Kimball, Casey, Brenda, Chris, everybody that's been working on this. Um, it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of information back and yeah. forth. And um, Bob Casey, Council, do you, thing, have, right? do you have the paperwork? It, it should be. It's it. the lock, lock lord thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think there's a note from Sarah on it that says there are nine pages, yeah, and okay. I attached the um, okay. sign here stickers. Yep. Okay. We got it. All right. So we, all those in favor. Yep. Yeah. We okay. Voted. We did. We voted. Okay. We're good. All right. Sorry, I was so looking at. So clerk of the select board, I will sign this one. Is that? I remember, I signed the document where it was the clerk, and it was supposed to be that clerk. She knows. I, I talked to her about it. Um, okay. So it's a select board clerk. No. It's the, right. So you got the select board clerk, clerk yeah. and then you have the assistant town clerk. And then this yep. is the select board. So there's some for you to sign. Okay. So the Hampshire land swap, where's that motion? Here? It's in there. We'll get there in a second. Okay. I just need to outline a couple things. All right. Huh. Oh, yeah. While well, you're signing, Trevor, I'll just say that um, there are. One, two, three, four people um, that were not involved in the in the human rights committee discussions that have volunteered or um, and there's an email in here. Um, I think that Deborah Yaffe forwarded just for our benefit. Um, so human rights committee. Yes. Yeah. So it's like Kate Lawless, Janice, Jan Janice James, George McCulley, and I, I, I saw the Harrington. volunteers. They seem to be really great. Yes. Yeah, so, so I'm pretty excited about that. We can just get the process now, though. Yeah. Um, all right. 
me see here. Oh, mostly it's Trevor. Oh, okay. just in the front. There's a bunch for you in the back. And we get to do this again when the second USDO is ready to go, right? Yes, yeah, on the sixth. Yeah. Well, that's the band. But... No, the sixth is a loan closing. The USDA, the USDA loan closing. The yeah. The eighth is the band process. Yeah. Okay, so, but I mean, aren't there two USDA loans? Oh, yes, there'll be another one. Yes, in September, yeah. I think we're hoping yeah. September, October, um, once we can get through the, once we spend enough. We should hopefully be able to start having this that grant the, uh, come back yes. to us. The pandemic. That's right, the pandemic. <laughs> Brenda and Sarah, what we could receive. I'm here, fine. All right, so I think so I didn't miss any. One more time. Um, okay, so did you see where the... I just wanted to look at that paperwork one last time and make sure this is also... So there was stuff for Locke and Lord. Yeah, but that... But that must be included in that packet. Yeah. Because this is all the clerk stuff. Yeah, okay, great. Yep, I just want to make sure. Fine. I didn't see anything. See, this all looks different. Um, Casey, do you want to talk about that? Um, Hampshire will purchase and sale. Oh, you yeah. missed one, Carolyn. Oh, oh, did I? I'll, I'll let you finish that, and then I won't. Because these are kind of complex documents. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you're done, I just want to put that. Up. You missed another one. It's too many signings. <laughs> like buying a house. It's like, don't tell me a nine million again. dollar house with a big I know, this clarifier is really and good. pumps and <sighs> all kinds of screens. Like hours worth of explaining like each page. You've got an HOA. Exactly. Yep. Except you can't leave it. You can if you need. Listen, you can. It'll always be nice and warm. You can flush the <laughs> yeah. toilet. That's good. Yes, people can flush their toilets. Yeah. That is a good thing. It's a big project, and I'm very proud of it. It's really come along very well. I know. Um, I have another, I have a meeting coming up next Wednesday. It'll be, I think, our 24th construction meeting. Two years. Yep. The next meeting. Yeah. It's been two years. Can you believe it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hampshire. Yeah, you want to look at that. So, council needs a vote. Double check. You have a copy to sign. Um, there's actually two motions you have to take. One's to acquire land, one's to convey land to Hanshaw. And we have to document who made the motion, who seconded it, um, the vote of each person, and outline the actual process of vote. So when you guys name yourselves and say I or nay. Okay. Um, the select board clerk is going to have to sign, and then um, the true attest copy will be done tomorrow. Cassie will do that tomorrow. Um, I so, think there's one more paper we're supposed to sign here. Uh, Casey, it's, I swear I don't know where that is. Unless we signed it already. I don't know where that I is. Think I just have to go Can I just, what, before we move on? I I don't. Oh, okay. This, That's the ham. Will you go away, Casey? Casey. Huh? Yeah. So you have this okay. here, right? Sorry, I missed that. No. With uh, signatures, but that's not in here. And then there's um, these are certifications. I'll read the first motion. I just I think the certifications might be clear, but I don't know. I can read both. Well, that's the treasurer signature on the first page. Right. Uh, but it's also got the select board. Why don't we let them finish this? Countersign. So I just want to make sure that, because these are, oh, these are certifications of votes, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So those are done. And then all the rest of this stuff, so, litigation of no financial interest. Yep. That's right. Uh, survival payment, all this stuff. 6.7. I don't think so. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's good. Okay. Good. And then this, we don't. Need to and sign as the treasurer signs that beneficiaries. Are you yeah. you okay, good. So yeah, this very first just, one, yeah. I just want to make sure was signed. 
describing official statement related with copy of services just available sure to the town. I just don't know if this, this one. I don't see that one. I don't either. So I just wondered if we should print that off and have that signed. I don't too. have it. Do you have Do you have the whole packet from Sarah, Chris? I don't. That's the original that Sarah gave me. Um, and the what's in the packet is what I received via email. Okay, so we're gonna we have could, to check the first. We could list. just sign that. Oh, but it's got something on the other but side. But it's got something oh. on the other side. So well, yeah, but print it clean. Just print but, it clean. But he doesn't. Oh. All right. We'll look, we'll work on that before the end of the you night, guys, just to make sure. Okay, we'll keep okay. that. I just so, want to make sure that that's signed. Yeah, thank you for checking. Okay. okay. Um. So go ahead, Tim. So I'll make a, uh, I hereby move that the select board acquire from Hampshire Deerfield LLC the land containing 3,958 square feet, more or less, known as parcel B, as shown on a plan of land entitled Subdivision Approval Not Required Plan of Land in Deerfield, Massachusetts, yeah. prepared for Hampshire Deerfield LLC. The inhabitants of the town of Deerfield scale one foot equal 30 feet, dated August 9, 2022, prepared by Harold L. Eaton and Associates, Inc., registered professional land surveyors, 235 Russell Street, Hadley, Massachusetts, recorded in the Franklin County Register of Deeds and Plan Book 152, page 41, as authorized pursuant to Article 13 of the October 24, 2022, Deerfield Special Town Meeting, and further to authorize the chair, Carolyn Shores Ness, to execute and enter into any and all documents necessary to effectuate the act acquisition of said property. And I hereby move that the select board convey to Hampshire. Do you want to do one? No, time? I think we should do one at a time. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll, make, uh, I'll second that motion, Tim. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. okay. And I hereby move that the select board convey to Hampshire Deerfield LLC the land containing 569, uh, 500, 5,692 square feet, more or less, known as Parcel A, as shown on a plan of land entitled Subdivision Approval Not Required Plan of Land in Deerfield, Massachusetts, prepared for Hanshaw Deerfield LLC. The inhabitants of the, know, the, inhabitants of the, of the town, town yep. of Deerfield uh, scale one foot equal 30 feet, dated August 9, 2022, prepared by Harold L. Associate, Harold L. Eaton and Associates, Inc., Registered Professional Land Surveyors, 235 Russell Street, Hadley, Massachusetts, recorded in the Franklin County Register of Deeds in Plan Book 152, page 41, as authorized pursuant to Article 12 of the October 24, 2022 Deerfield Special Town Meeting, and further to authorize the chair, Carolyn Shores Ness, to execute and enter into any and all documents necessary to effectuate the acquisition of said property. I'll second that motion. Okay, is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, so. Sign. sign this. For that one here. I, this is all I have. You have to sign as a clerk too. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're actually having to work today. Yeah, no. work. that's right. All right, so I have to go back to it. So it was on this page. It's this lock lord, and then that. But there's no reference on this page, so I just printed that page. Oh, this one here, perfect. That's um, all we so need. That, yeah, that's it. Okay, so we'll sign that. Two that Okay. I don't think so. No, so we did these. We did those. Yep. Yeah. So all right. Um, next item on the agenda is letter of support for the South County Senior Center Digital Literacy Grant. I I could have sworn we already voted. I thought we did this too. I think we did. I think this might be placeholder. What the digital, senior center digital, digital literacy? literacy. Right. I think we did that. Already. We did that. I could have sworn, Casey. Yeah, that, that was approved at the last meeting. Okay, good. Um, okay, all right, so, so that's we can done. take it off. Yeah, that that should be. I think that was just a placeholder that got left okay. on by accident. That's fine. Okay. Um, 
but the rural letter education. of support for the rural educational aid um, that is I'm, I'm a member of a group um, and Tim was really nice to um, edit this letter a bit. Um, we're trying to get more additional funding for the 119 school districts that get 30 bucks a kid, which in this, it looks like we're gonna get 60 bucks a kid, but for a school like Frontier, it's like $36,000 drop in the bucket, not enough. So this is to get Joe and Natalie both have bills that they filed Okay. Um, and so this is a request to support to the Joint um, Committee on Educational Members to um, have a public hearing on Joe and Natalie's um, vote to have more funding. Okay. So make a motion to support the letter. Second. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you, uh, Tim, very much. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. It's a it's a really fantastic group, and yep. we have the Massachusetts um, School Committee group supporting this Great. as well. So I think I feel like we're going to get a little bit of um, um, support here. I think um, that letter maybe was for um, the letter of support because the other letter of support we have is for. Um, uh, Jason and James Heller oh, have yeah. uh, put forward a request. And again, oh, um, yeah, maybe that's what it was for. Um, Tim uh, redid a little bit of writing. Um, so this is a letter of support for them to um, for grant towards purchasing and renovation of Cumbies. Uh, it's an eyesore to the center of town. It's been Absolutely. vacant since 2018. Yep. And they want to fix it up, put a pocket park across from the common, which is what I wanted from Gas there. station and coffee. Is that what they get said? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> um, this is for uh, right. under underutilized properties program, basically right. eyesores. So I'll make a motion to approve the letter of support. And again, thank Tim for working on that letter. Uh, second. Um, all those in favor? Trevor Tim, Daniel, aye. Tim Hilgey, aye. And Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, and thanks again, Tim, because yeah. uh, the grant is due on um, June um, 2nd, and poor Casey has been working so hard on the community one stop that uh, this would have been. Too, Chris too and I had a nice moment today when um, <laughs> it was sort of funny. I had written a letter and forwarded it to him, and he had received a, a draft letter from the Hellers that he then showed me some edit trace on and and then I recognized wait a minute that's not what I wrote <laughs> and I said well you you wanted to make some of the same changes I did so that's a good sign that's great yeah so um Casey could you um just send me a copy of this um yeah we'll want to scan it after you sign yeah, yeah. Yep. Can I, oh, oh, to, oh yeah, God, yeah. This. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. you need to sign. Um, you didn't you signed it okay yeah. yeah um date for the special town meeting there was a request. Oh, go ahead. So I request the reason I requested it is we need to start a planning process. Yeah. Um, particularly since there was a lot of discussion about Prop Two and a Half. Yep. So you should know that Chris and I are starting to work up sort of our capacity identifiers. Right. Um, Good. I already know there's certain things we're going to have to take to town meeting. Well, um, what? Uh, uh, Cassie sent a letter about some stuff she'd like done at town meeting too. Uh, that was um, I, I'm drawing a blank, but yes, about the dog hearing, the dog, dog hearing stuff, yeah. or dog so, licenses and stuff. So adjustments to that dog bylaw. Yeah. Um, potentially adjustments to the personnel bylaw. Classification yeah. compensation plan may have to be revised, and I'll I'll share that information later. Okay. Um, we obviously know we're gonna have to deal with funding. Yep. So my thought was, if we can start this process yep. by you guys identifying a time frame, and Tim and I had a conversation about this offline, because some of some of the financial things may be predicated on the federal government's consideration of an earmark. October, 20th. but functionally, we have to schedule the space, get the audit auditorium or get the audio visual set up. Um, make sure that town council and the moderator can attend. And there's several projects that need to go through CIPC approval and other types of yeah. approval. So 
those things need to start. So from a planning perspective, there's a whole lot of stuff that's got to happen before we can hold one. I would propose August, uh, October 23rd. That's sort of what I was looking at. And I told, yep. I told Casey that I would reach out to the senators and uh, Congressman McGovern's offices to find out if they have a, any general guidance about when these things typically are approved um, because um, you know, one big project is dependent on that and it would change what the CIPC was asked to look at and what the CPC yeah. was asked to uh, approve. So um, I, I can say normally what happens is that, uh, the earmarks are usually around Labor Day because they have to be spent from before the September 30th. And the following year. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, no, the cutoff of the federal budget is September 30th. So they are announced before that September 30th debit. Oh, right. okay. So I just want to confirm that. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. So the, I and think since it's such a weird year, I think the House is voting tonight on whether we're going to have any money to, you know, June 5th. So, right. Um, and then the Senate has to do the same thing. So. That's right. And I, um, I, I mean, I, we could go into November if people had to, but it, I think October is always about what we try to, to do. The you guys usually do this, and right. it is uh, kind of I don't know what is. Well, I don't I don't want to have a town meeting days. unless we get certification of free cash. Right, so this is tentative. Yeah, right. Twenty third. Each of free cash is going to happen in September. That's all. Yeah, we, uh, we run this. Usually, that's what happens. Yeah, twenty third. I I think the twenty third seems. Yeah. Okay. So far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And subject. Yeah. I mean, subject to whatever. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we could check to see if that's. We okay. have to check with the school. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh -huh. we have that. Um, you know what? For a letter of support, I I noticed that was not on here. Casey, was for Treehouse. It is on there. Is it? Yes. Did, Chris, we didn't have an example of that, did we? No, no. No, I never saw any example of that, and I, I didn't know enough what about Kevin, what it was about to try to attempt writing one myself. Um, oh, it's what Kevin um, put in. We sent a letter of support for the parade and the yes. And, um, it's the same DOT mass DOT permit process that we use. We had to write a letter of support for the parade. We had to write a letter of support for the cake. Is this okay? Here? Thing? Is yes, Treehouse oh, okay. tree, tree house is half doing marathon. half marathon, uh, 350th half marathon on September 17th. Okay, sure. I, I, yeah, I, that's I easy. Have. I'm happy to draft one of those. There's placeholder. Uh, no, that's not it. It's not it. I don't see no, it. It's on the letters of support right after rural educational aid. Treehouse sponsorship of 350th run walk. I don't Gosh, have that I, list. I don't have the agenda. I don't it's have probably it. on a maybe by, old. revised agenda. Maybe I have, I have, maybe have, an, old. I have an old one, maybe, Casey. Yeah. It's okay. That's fine. As long we'll as just vote it. it as long as you have it. Yeah, we're good. It's fine. It's on my agenda. Yeah. It's not on our we but might just have an older version or something. We, um, do we have the letter? Um, no, but we have to write it. Chris can write it tomorrow. Yeah, uh, just just ask Kevin what he had to submit for the parade and for the cake, Chris. Okay, um, so I will take a motion to support the Treehouse three um, hundred fiftieth uh, on September seventeenth half marathon. Uh, so moved. I'll second that motion. Um, all those in favor? Tim Milchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Casey. All right. Um, revised. revised committed ARPA projects for review. Did you? I think we don't. Are we I good? revised it and I gave you a, a okay. form just to show the, the 30,000. Okay. Um, yeah. At the request of Tim. And we, okay. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and and so that's that. okay. Yeah. Everyone feels comfortable with it yep. still. Okay. We don't need to just talk about it then because okay. we've. I thought next last week was read pretty... through all my supporting documents here. Yeah. It's hard to keep track. Um okay. There's a placeholder here. Is there any more Leary Lot um updates or 
Uh, just that I hope everybody is going to be able to join us for the June 8th, uh, 6 o'clock community discussion. Um, last week, I sent out over 150 notifications to different businesses, residents, and property owners across uh, that 500-foot circle around the property. Uh, we're hoping as many people show up as possible. Um, posters have also been hung in different areas of town, and I'm making sure it gets put on the website as well. Um, I also had a conversation with Chris Larrabee about having that advertised in the recorder. So um, we're really going for as many different avenues of communicating to people as we can. Um, and we basically want to hear as much input as possible. Um, I know a lot. there's a lot of push to emphasize green space, and that is something that we definitely want to hear. Um, and if tenants or business owners have specific parking concerns that they want addressed, uh, these are all things that are going to be talked about. So uh, Jeff Squire is going to be there from Berkshire Design. Um, we're also going to have a couple of folks from Rivermore Energy who have been helping with the EV charging side of the project uh, present to take questions. Um, Great. And we're going to really be receptive to whatever kinds of feedback we get. So hopefully everybody's able to join us. I have six, six o'clock, Six o'clock? Six, six o'clock, yep. Okay, it's uh, six, eight from six to eight. That's great. Perfect. Thank Perfect. you for your Thank work you. on that. Is yes. Funny? Thank you for getting that together. Um, do we have waiver of insurance for any additional 350s? We do have this uh, list here. I think it was uh, additional requests, select board, additional requests, if uh, waiver offered to Mummers. It was, there was a couple of items. I don't have a name. Mummers is the only one on that list. Yeah. yeah. I, was, wasn't I think sure they, what... they understood like we're good if they can kind of yeah. just get what they need to get and focus on whatever they need I, to work on. Their so. contract is with yeah. friends okay. of yours. So, so I don't I think, think there's we, any other no. thing up at, up at this moment, but they can okay. reach out if they need to. Okay. Um, we have annual appointments, the police department, public wares, and scams. Okay. So um, in the past, have we read them, Casey, or we do have. we just have? No. Oh, okay. You I think to... the document's been provided online. We typically right, Chris. You uploaded the packet. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I think you could probably vote it as presented because okay. we have the document for reference. Okay. Um. All right. Now we don't have the new hire on here, do we? Not yet. No. Not so no. They're still working. That's. On. I actually have a request when you're finished with. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I will entertain a motion to um do the police appointments as presented. Well, just because I think it's good to name our police okay. officers, Absolutely. but not That's... all of them. I just, well, I think if it, you want I to, think it's good to... because it, uh, you know, I don't know. I well, we appreciate fine. them a lot. So I think um, I make a motion to appoint uh, the annual appointments uh, per the per the document um, and and requested by Chief Pachurik. Uh Full time officers: John Pachurik, Pachurik Jr., Chief. Indefinite, Adam Sokolowski, Sergeant, Indefinite, Brian Ravish, Sergeant, Indefinite, Jennifer Bartek, Sergeant, Indefinite, Mark W. Pachalski, Officer, Indefinite, uh, Marissa Smith, uh, uh, Indefinite, Timothy Bolin, Indefinite, Ma uh, Matthew uh, Bader, Indefinite, Timothy Capuano, Officer, Indefinite, James Fitzgerald, Officer, uh, indefinite and Andrew Hable, officer indefinite. indefinite. Uh, special officers for the term of 2024 Deborah Austin, matron administrative assistant, Harry Ruddick, uh, part time sergeant, um, Robert uh, Warger, officer, Joseph uh, Machkowski, the third officer, Garrett Gary S. Sevilla, officer and court officer, uh, Jesse Rosnick, officer, Mark uh, Wilkins, officer. Robert Thresher, officer, um, Mark Jocks, officer, Brendan Bryant, officer, Ethan Krause, officer, uh, Michael Hawell, officer, David uh, Gendron, auxiliary officer in traffic control, Raymond Berniski, auxiliary officer, traffic control, and David Carbon, officer, auxiliary officer, traffic control. Special appointees for the term of 2024 is Donald Bates as a Conway chief, James Savine, Waitley chief, Eric uh, Dimitropoulos, Sunderland Chief, Brendan Lyons is a Sunderland Sergeant, 
Brenda Tuzlowski, Sunderland officer, Peter Scoble, Sunderland officer, and Benjamin Peters, Sunderland officer. And the crossing guards, which we thank for the term of 2024, is uh, Diane Baronis and Henrietta Cocott. Perfect. You second that, Jim? Second. Thank you. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. And Carolyn S. I. Thank you um, to our officers. Yeah. They're wonderful. Just want to take a step back um, to the waivers. Um, there yep. is actually um, in here name of the Great American Marching Band that apparently needs liability insurance waiver. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you for catching and that. Did you find that? Yes. It's, it's right before the police officer thing in the packet. Oh, okay. yeah, there it is. Okay. And then there's also a uh, waiver for proof of vehicle insurance for farm equipment from Barway Farm. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yep. The, they say they have a, a certificate of liability insurance already from, from them. I'll make that motion for the waivers. Uh, second it. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Thank you. Um, yes, make sure that gets into the minutes. Thank you. Because um, we did not. <laughs> We missed that. We that is a correction. Yeah, because I, I I remember Holly saying that she had names, but then I saw the thing that you saw, Trevor, with just the mummers. Yeah. yeah. And so I was at a loss, but then I saw that. So perfect. Thank you for catching that. Yep. Thank you. Um we have the weighers now. Mm -hmm. To make a motion to appoint um select uh the public weighers. Aaron Campbell from Allstate's Asphalt, Corey Hamilton, Allstate Asphalt, uh, Miles Downey, Ryan uh, Pachalis, Brian Price, Sean Telega, Tyler Shaunafelt, all from Allstate Asphalt. The rest are from True Corp with uh, Janine uh, Savoy, Robert Green, Leo uh, Ciccone, Don uh, Kazakis, Brian Willis, and Mike uh Mujinkowski. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill G I. Trevor McDaniel I. Carolyn S. I. Okay. You. That's done. Um, and now we have scams. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I'm <laughs> I'll make a motion to a point. Zoe's trying to make us wear glasses. Yeah. But yeah uh, right. I was gonna say, you know, who's small. Yeah. <laughs> so make a motion for the South County EMS appointments um, for FY23. Um, Zachary Bastoni, uh, Eric Drumgool, Timothy Drumgool, uh, Teresa Emerson, uh, Aaliyah uh, Kosmal, Lori McComb, Anthony Mozinski, Gary Ponce, Zoe Smith, and Alicia Tola. And these would be for the um, paramedic and, uh, of course, always the uh, EMS chief. And then per diems would be uh, Leah Doolittle, uh, Carly Eaton, uh, Morgan Farrick, Maxwell uh, Gannon, Mason Jenkins, Aaron uh, Kerdavid, Adam Martin, John Miller, Yvonne uh, Marino, Philip Snow, Tyler Struthers, uh, May, May Tanner, Mark Tremblay, and uh, Ahad uh, Yildiz. That is it. Second. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And Carolyn S. I. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for your service, too. Um, we have a. Uh, uh, an appointment and a resignation. So we have an appointment as an alternate on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Did you make a motion, Tim? Oh, um, so yeah, this is the, um, I make well, a motion. Thank you, Trevor. I make a motion to appoint uh, Laura Pontani as, um, um, I don't know which appointment are we at. Uh, so the only appointment that's available right now right. Is, is the Z alternate. Is the bolus, I mean, is the Jennifer Remillard resignation? Yes. Okay. Yes. She was an alternate. Right. Um, I will make a motion to appoint. This uh, is only until June 30th, mm -hmm. 2020. Right. Because right. Wow. I think that's when we do all the appointments. We do all the appointments. So you're going to do this again? Yeah. Yes. 
you will appoint the full board members and the alternates at that point and uh, consider anybody who's right up for reappointment that this way she's she's hers um and that's it's the same we were talking about else. which which ones were on the three-year cycle i know that robert decker is i think up for reappointment and then i can't remember when jennifer was appointed so but doesn't matter we're yeah. just doing it till june 30th okay june 30th 2023 so I'll well, make a motion to appoint Lori Pantani as an alternate member of the ZBA uh, through June 30th, 2023. I'll second that motion. Um, if there's no other um, discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Lori, for Laura for um, coming forward on that. We also have a resignation from Alex White. He's moving on to D DEP. Um, so he has a full-time job um, in the water quality division. So um, I mo make a motion to accept his resignation and thank him for his service to the town of Deerfield. I'll second that and second my thanks as well. Um, and uh, okay. Nope. Okay. All, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Okay. And thank you for your service to us as well. Um, we have a placeholder on any policies, Casey. So I just need to advise the board that the appointment policy that they enacted a few weeks ago only applies to select board appointments unless and until a bylaw is put in place that mandates it for all appointing authorities because there are several different appointing authorities in town. Okay. Yep. Yep. We understood that. Um, so if we were to want to put forward such a bylaw, that would go through the Planning board are they the ones that usually do these things or is this that's not a could, zoning bylaw that's could a general be a, so we could have you guys yeah. can do it right okay thank you I would ask for some guidance also yeah well yep. um that's that seems like and a, that's a that's another conversation yep. that I think um would be useful to have with the other appointing authorities similar to dealing with our consideration of changes to town meeting mm -hmm. sure okay um Placeholder contracts agreements, Casey? Um, actually, we need to back up. The board needs to vote the updated special municipal employees list. Okay. Um, it came to our attention that there were, there was a conflict in the original policy sent to the state because after I reviewed the law, the special municipal employees designation applies to positions, not people. So Pat helped me redraft it and I made some adjustments to it. It needs to be forwarded back to the state as, as an updated list. Um, one thing that I would suggest is we may have to update this again if the board creates new committee. Okay. Um, but the state doesn't actually say they have an official copy from us. So what's currently here is, is what we currently have. So it's town of Deerfield, the Office of Southwood Board of Health, uh, special municipal employees. Yeah, I'm going to find it. Hmm. Well, okay. I will take a motion on this. Do we want me to use the result in case? I think you voted. So my suggestion would be vote the updated list as presented um, okay. on May 31st. Right, is, is it dated May 31st? I can't yes. see it. Yes, yes it is. It's to, it's written backwards, 2023-05-31, but maybe that's the way the state likes it. I can correct that. That's okay. Never, um, but um, I make a motion to approve... Um, an updated list of special municipal employees um, as presented uh, to the select board on uh, May 31st, 2023. I'll second that. All right. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hill G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Okay. So oh. we have an HR investigation that we need to conduct. Um, I've reached out for pricing 
for an independent third party to conduct that investigation, we will end up having to sign a contract. I'm asking the board to give me permission to execute that contract to keep the process moving. Um, do you want us to vote on that, Casey? Or just you just to... uh, it, it falls within the twenty five thousand, but I wanted you to know that it's going to come through. All right. Um, I don't have any problem with it. Not much we can. No, it has to occur, so no objection to it. Trevor, you okay with it? I'm good. Okay. All right. And then the Valley Health Regional Collaborative IMA. No. Yes, this is. Um, we have already signed the same intermissible agreement for um, our public health nursing grant. And this year, 2023, um, and then going forward, they combined, there was two separate grants. Now they've combined it. So it's 496,000, they cut it a little bit, 496,000 a year. For, this, for us to participate um, that we get for public health. It's going to be um, shared inspector, uh, shared, we we want to say, it's not a, that we can't hire a social worker, but it is um, um, health assistant, which will have the same duties as a social worker. And um, additional public health nursing, so that you know the Maven and uh, TB and all that kind of stuff can be followed up. So this is what we're doing is updating the agreement because it, the money has been combined in one instead of two separate ones. They, uh, with the the governor came and cut cut it a little bit. So what they did is they combined them for us because it was we were supposed to get we were getting almost six hundred thousand now we're getting like a hundred thousand dollars less almost but it's a 10-year 10 10-year 10 um agreement greenfield is the lead community we do not have any responsibility um that i mean i go to the meetings that are required every mm -hmm. month there's seven meetings a month ah. but um, it's worth it. It's gonna once we get settled down, uh, hopefully it will be less less meetings. But it's the same that we've already I already ran through and we had signed before. Okay. And it's Greenfield, Montague, Sunderland, um, Deerfield, Leverett, and Shrewsbury. Okay. Do we, um, so are we advertising, not to jump back a little bit, but we're advertising for uh, replacement? Not yet. So are we going to, do we need to look at that and mm -hmm. for, for Alex. Eric? Alex. Uh, Alex White. We can't, we will. Yeah. My I question is we have to, so I'm, I'll notify you that we have a job description in place. Right. Um, we can put the vacancy notice out. Yeah. And Chris and I can put it up in various places, including MMA. Yeah. Um we you guys needed to accept the resignation before we start that. Of course. Yeah. So this is me saying, okay, we'll get on this because yeah, yeah, yeah. vacancy isn't going to change that much. No, no. Um, um and we have I just want to update it though. And he's right. update June, this. June 18th. No, update, you know, update uh, the job description. description. I okay. want us to look at it. So right. that's gonna slow the process down. Yeah. I, I think then, we're going to be fine. Uh, it's cool. Everything's, you know, the spring is the rush. But who's dealing with the work while we're not? Exactly. Um, Dick and Val, Valerie are coming in. Valerie's coming in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. And essentially taking Alex's hours. So we should jump on this reevaluation very fast. The entire to get board that thing needs out. to review it, and so yeah. does personnel. So let's yeah. do this that. This has to go through that, both let's, those processes. Let's do that fast. Um, so we can get I it out there. Do it so fast. No, right out, <laughs> Casey. I just meant like I don't want to leave everybody hanging. So right. as soon no, as we can, yeah. It. No, I know. Uh, that's either. fine. We haven't tomorrow. Is, you know, he <laughs> just tomorrow, right? There's always he, tomorrow. Right. He just right. got this job. 
We yeah. just accepted okay. the direct donation. Yeah. I, Having a week or two is not a big deal. Just want to, because we're to do morphs into months. So I just want to yeah. make sure that we get well, we're going gonna, on that. I, I just want to review. And how does this, this doesn't affect that position at all? What we're going to do is we'll have backup. All right. You know, th that they know that if Valerie or Dick can't, um, are overwhelmed, we have a big load, and then the person will be here. We were planning to do this for anyways, right? And this is just oh, yeah. that we're just getting less money now. It's a hundred thousand dollars less yeah, yeah, to the whole group. Yeah. To the whole group. But it's, it's what they did was take a seven year one and a ten year one. They gave us it. they gave us less money, but they made the whole thing ten years. Okay. That's so fine. it's All right. yeah. And it's guaranteed money for 10 years instead yeah. of seven. Seven. Right. Sounds good. And you'd rather so, have guaranteed 10. So right. it's a little, it's, it is less, but. It's a million dollars less. Right. If you factor in 10, but it's it's only 700,000. Well, less. since they're not doing COVID. Yeah. I know. Any longer. Yep. So Just anyway. Make sure we're getting. We need a motion to approve. Yes. You need a motion to approve this. What's your call again? Uh, Valley, we're, we're called the Valley Health. I make a motion to approve the Valley Health Regional Collaborative uh, uh, Intermunicipal Agreement for the Public Health Excellence and Shared Services Grant. Second. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, I believe. We're getting close has... to the end here. Yes, we are. Um, this is has to be signed by the select board, and it has to be signed by the chair of the board of health, I believe. So here's the select board, and then uh, and then I will sign as chair of the board of health. Yes, we're getting done. Here we go. Um, is that the only place I need to sign? Yes. Okay. And yep. then Tim needs right. to sign. And then um, Casey, we have the do. You, is it in your administrative report the two things we have left to sign? I think we have things left to sign. Um, we have the, provide that in the, partition, the petition for special legislation. This is the Those were actually things, sorry to interrupt. Those were things I snuck into the folder because, um, well, snuck in is not the right word, but um, they've already been approved. Um, there's just an extra copy that's needed. So for the petition for special legislation that was approved uh, several meetings ago, I want to say early April. Um, and we need an extra copy because uh, Senator Comerford's office did not get an original. They got a copy and they need an original as well. Okay. Um, so that's all that is. And can you remind me what the other one was that wasn't on the agenda, but in the- it's, um, The all alcohol, it should have been instead of um, the, of the wine and malt. Correct. So um, yeah, there was a little bit of confusion over what Friends of Deerfield was looking for. Um, and they did decide they want an all alcohol license instead of wine and malt. So we just reprinted that for them. Okay. So thank you to Pat for kind of turning on that one and oh, no, no, no. making a quick fine. adjustment. This is, um, I think we should revote it just so that there's no issues. Yep, let's do it. Um, sure. This is um, the Friends of Deerfield, Stan Adams is requesting a one day all liquor license for the barbecue at. Deerfield Academy from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Berkshire Brewing will be the serving. I will take a moment. Then everybody, barbecue. Uh, Please come. Um, all alcohol permit. I don't think you can do an all alcohol. You don't have a service for all. All you have service for wine and malt. That's a BBC service. That's the what? BBC. BBC does wine and malt. Is there? Oh, they don't do all alcohol. There, so, um. So here, here is what happened. So the license is in the name of the Friends of Deerfield. Um, but the individual server is going to be from Berkshire Brewing, which 
according to the ABCC and all the policies that Pat and I looked through should be acceptable. Got it. Okay. That's different. Sounds good. All right. So, that other thing, the wine oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you make a motion, right? Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, to uh, approve the one day all alcohol liquor license for friends of Deerfield, Stan Adams, um, for June 18th, 2023. Second. Thank you. Second. Yep, he did. Okay. All those in favor? Daniel G. I. Deborah McDaniel I. Carolyn S. I. Okay. I think that's all we have to do for signing tonight. Yep. Okay. All right. Casey, your report. So projects, 1821 building. Um the grant process is substantially complete. Um, there's some review to the grant application that needs to happen tomorrow. So that's, I'm the last person to look at it. Um, there is some work that needs to be done on the earmark. So I reached out to Senator Comerford's uh, staff to set up a meeting. 1880 building. Um, my suggestion is that the Town Building Advisory Committee and Select Board meet with the OPM to discuss next steps. Okay. Um, the upgrades project, the loan paperwork's done. Um, if there's anything that needs to be changed, they haven't indicated it. So at this point, the loan closure closure date should be June sixth. Do you um, do you want me to reach out to Joe and just see? He would have said something. I, to I us. figured. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that we're good. I wasn't worried about it because Lisa's... my conversation with him, he seemed to be accepting of the paperwork we said. Right. Right. Okay. So, and it still may be going through their general counsel. Probably is. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So Pine Oak Road, Paul Corpita came in and talked to you tonight. Yep. Um, prior to that, we began research with in our records as well as contacting counsel. Uh, one of the main things we need to find is the date of a road acceptance before a town council can give you some next steps. ARPA projects. You got your Leary Lot update from Chris. Um, we really need to see based on some of the discussion items that may happen next week, Yep. whether it, it significantly impacts design. And so this is an information session. You're gathering information. Yep. My guess is you may have to come back to the table with people and show more data. Yeah. Um, so that's just a thought. Um, and the assistant general administrator will continue to work on that project. Hamshaw, hopefully with that vote, we can get this closing done for the conveyance of land and acquisition. Um, we'll provide that to council tomorrow. Um, the stakeholder outreach you already heard about. Uh, the police HVAC system, we're still waiting for the bid specifications to be revised. Um, I do think that the choice to cancel the bid and revise them was a good choice because there's some elements of, of negotiation that might not have flown in right. terms of the procurement. Okay. Um, financial, so capital planning. Subsequent to town meeting, it came to my attention that there's several CIPC capital projects that need to be addressed. Okay. Um, you have the city housing ad hoc land acquisition that we don't have an application for. Right. Um, we have two potential APRs that we were notified about this week. Uh, the repairs to the 1821 building, the relish repair. Yep. Um, which I did, I was working on. Um, All right. Then the issue here is the town administrator is the main conduit for a lot of these groups. So you have CPA funds involved, you have capital involved, you have finance committee involved, and you have a select board. Involved. And this is becoming very top heavy and silo. I mean, so cooks in the kitchen. Chris, <laughs> yes. Chris and I discussed it this morning. We're going to start with capital and progress to the other committees and develop the guide and stuff. Okay. Cool. Um, Sounds fine. Yep. It, it will inform the next pieces of the budget process because I have to say, after listening to all the committees talk and the town meeting, I really think we need to get on this budget process now if yes. we want nine months to a year to inform the public. Right. So mm -hmm. that's the, that's a About project. The, that the prop two and a half. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If we, so if we need this it, yes. planning we is do. key to that. Uh, once we have a guidance document, we'll send it out to all of you. 
Um, so budget preparation, we need to reconstitute the financial team, which is a staff team, an internal staff team. I talked to the accountant. I'm going to send an email out to start that back up because after going through the loan documents, there's so many intersects with so many offices. Yep. And we used to do it as a planning exercise for budgeting. This is a great time to do that. Um, it sounds like you're not happy about that, Carolyn. No, I was just thinking all this stuff. There's a lot of work to do. Yeah, there that's is. what I'm not not anything for you, but just. Oh my yeah. God. No, there's a lot to Overwhelmed. do if we're going to get to the budget season. Yeah. And frankly, I'm going to have some suggestions about some adjustments that may not make everybody happy. But if you want to get there, we need to we okay. need to plan better, which right. is one of the reasons I asked you guys to consider a special town meeting day, because there's yeah. several things that will go on between okay. those two points. You mean you want us to raise the select board salary and we're not going to be pleased with that? You can try. Okay. No, no, I'm I'll do that. I'm teasing. No, I, I Tim, don't need any. You just, just, yeah, I'm Tim, teasing. don't, don't tease because if people think, hear that, that's what. I can let that video clip get taken out of context. Perfectly willing to donate the 60 hours a week that I spend on town business. So to do something else, right? Yeah. Um, so let's see grants, community one stop I just mentioned, uh, community compact grants. We have to do some feasibility work for the second grant that we got, or the regional grant that we got. And I finally was able to set up an appointment with Andrea. She's in, she had a lot of work going on for annual bids. So we're going to meet tomorrow at 11. Uh, shared streets and spaces, the grant team met in mid May to discuss the siting of one of the crosswalks. Um, we got some help from the COG, they had helped us develop the grant in the first place. So we have some information from them. The town administrator needs to send a request to MDOT for an extension, which will happen by Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned the Comerford earmark. I've reached out to her staff, and I'll keep you up to date on what that ha what that means. Do, um, is she looking for any quotes or any anything else? Any earmark? So not not that I know of yet. I will okay. Just make sure that if. Um, you know, we take advantage of Tim again and make sure our comments are, you well, know, we can put the comments together, but just, I just really would like Tim to have a look at it. So, okay. What's that? Anything well, that this communicated is, between um, Senator times when, when Joe or Natalie or whoever put, does an earmark or does some kind of um, money for us, then what happens is you have to test, have quotes or letter, you know, some kind of supporting documentation. So we have to develop a budget. That's yeah. what I need to yeah. talk to them about. Yeah. yeah. Before anybody else gets involved, we need to have that involved, conversation. Yeah. No, 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 no. But I mean, if if anything goes out to their office, I just wanted us to have plenty of time to look at it. Okay. Um, there's some significant issues in the human resources realm, which is a responsibility of the town administrator. Um, council's been contacting or developing a plan to deal with that. Um, the end of your process is coming up, which means uh, department heads and staff have been notified of the dates, the key dates that have to be met. Mm -hmm. And the accountant and I and Sarah will be working on getting through that because there's a lot of communication that goes on, collecting of bills. So I know the finance committee's meeting on Monday. They're going to discuss transfers in some way but we don't have final bills for litigation or several other things. So that may have to happen a little bit later in June or in July. Okay. Um, and I talked to Brenda about that. Um, the planning economic development coordinator job description and hiring process. So the select board had Tim provide revisions to the job description. Those are substantive enough that they need to go to personnel and planning. Um, the position title can't be changed without going through a personnel review and hearing process and changing the class comp through town meeting. That's the policy. That's the process in the bylaw. Yep. Um, I know you don't want to hear black and white, but I can't what? violate the bylaw. Say so, that again. What was that again? So the, the name of the, the name of the person can't be changed without going to town yes, for a vote. It's already but, in the, but the job description can be written any way we want it to be written. Exactly. And so that was my suggestion. Don't change the title, reframe what is in the job description to highlight the key points. But that really does have to go to personnel and planning because it's substantially different. From what they were. Issue. 
Um, I just moved the economic and grant writing portion. Yeah, he shifted from some. Third or fourth or fifth to, to the primary two and three. I see. And um, I, th I think that's and I think important. probably the lesson here is that you know I don't know if there's a lesson because we had to go to town meeting. It's a requirement. Yeah, there's we nothing. To, we had to have a name. We had to have a title. Name. Yes, we had so, to have a title. Um, those elements that you identified were there. Yeah, exactly. And there. that's the key thing is, is putting them in a place that it, they're very visible. So some of the stuff that Tim did makes them more visible. Um, okay. I reviewed it today and there's some things that I that I would just want to finish thinking about. Um, I would prefer to keep the title the same because it's going to require, it's going to be less money. Mm -hmm. because you have to go through an entire hearing process which requires notifications and those notifications are getting more and more expensive but the law states we have to do a certain do things a certain way i can't get around it. right like, yeah, we, if i can change if i could have the legislature right. make have, those changes i would we have no problem with the vote. it's fine it's just a question of whether the board wants to move forward with that process because we have to put it in a queue for a special town meeting but what, for what if you want to change the title of the position no Let's just get the Why person hired and see how they do yeah. and then figure out what we want to call them. Yeah, we can uh, always change the position title later. Um, I know. But I think if we What's try to go through the title right process, now? we'll be more informed Planner by the time it It's Planning Economic Development. Yeah, it's Planning, Planning Economic Development Coordinator. Yeah. So why would we want to change that? It's so fine. Yeah, it's it fine. It doesn't matter. Sure. Okay. All right. I'm good. Just, I was lost there. But. Yeah, I mean, bottom line is that I think when I, when I, I didn't realize that there was any agreed upon title and you know and i just thought it right. was made up yeah and so i changed it to, to say you know grant writer grant administrator i don't oh, know what i said got it got but it. planning economic development yeah. coordinator is fine all in the same wheelhouse yeah. the, the whole point is to sort of it says economic it says planning good with that it, so fine. that's why I, was, yeah. I brought it up yeah okay um so that's some of the work that's been happening in the office Thanks, we have daily questions thank you be word thank you everybody thanks Rocky. Yeah. Um, that we handle on a regular basis. So hey, you beat us. You beat us. I know. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It was good to see you, Tim. Okay. Um, so that's the substantial work that's been happening in the last couple of weeks. And Chris had given you his own report. I just hadn't finished mine. Can I just quickly ask you what your impression of the um Sunderland Road property was. I did not, I wasn't aware of that meeting. That so there was an email that went out about that meeting. Um, it's it's a fairly large space. This it's 10,000 square feet on Plumtree Road, the former Oxford University Press Building. Sinauer. Does everybody know Sinauer what I'm talking Publishing. about? I guess there's a piece of property there yeah. that's going to be for sale. We don't know the price. And we So we know nothing except that it's fairly chopped up. Okay. Um, there would need to be renovations. It's a big space. We would need some feasibility work on that planning work to figure out how we can best utilize the rooms. Okay. Um, the thing that the takeaway that I discussed with Joyce and the other two town administrators and Jennifer was taking this information because, if I recall correctly, both groups want to see um, the potential for other properties in either in any of the three towns. Yeah. So this is my first opportunity to talk to Andrea tomorrow. Okay. And bring that up with her. Um, and I'll let the, the town administrators know whatever happens. So she'll start working on it. So that. I guess they went and looked at a building that yeah. I think Tom mentioned was going to be up. So it was a good idea to go look and just, just see, what, out about it. it's see a very, what it is. It's a very nice building. It's, it's, it's got ways, parking. It's, it's it's a ways from, it's like, the, it's further away than I would like it for Deerfield and from. and and um, Waitley residents. But um, but we can't be picky, so we should look at these ideas and and it see what's going on. Yeah, I just want to bring yeah. it. To no, the I, table I think when it's it important to do and see what we can see what we can get out of it. Yeah. Okay. My we, they move process. slow, though. That's my impression. What's that? They move slow. Oh, okay. And I think I looked at the. Um, I think I went on to Sunder. It's Sunderland, right? Yes. I went on to Sunderland's GIS and looked at it. it looked like it was built in 1994. It's a wooden structure. It's. 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 The renovations they did most recently were like in 2011, 2012. Right. So it's fully sprinklered. It has plenty of storage space. It has a lot of office space. Right. Um, it's the center area and it's kind of tough because right. if you want a bigger area for programs, 
you would need to sort of adjust some of these rooms that are on the periphery. So it really means the center is kind of a not as usable space. But if you want to take a look, you could see. Um, yeah, I can ask yeah. Jeff if he can help us with that. Yeah, I mean that's something that's covered in the feasibility study. That right, approved, right. So. They would look at that. Right. And so we have no idea of price or timeline because right. the oversight group is located in England and they haven't addressed some of those questions yet. Okay. They also don't have a broker, yep. which I haven't asked any, I haven't asked council about any of that, but I, there's some nuances to that. The other um, property that was brought up to me during the Memorial Day celebration was the Yankee Candle offices. Um just passing on the note of what somebody was wondering about. They thought it would be a great place to consolidate everything that, that happens in Deerfield. It may be way too big, but Very it, big. It, I, I get, I've never been in it. I don't know what it looks like, but you wouldn't have to build it. And uh, you could fit, I mean, of course, they wanted to fit the library and everything in that. That's not happening because it's already being done. Yeah. Um, but, you know, senior center growth for the future, the town hall meeting space, it has a full cafeteria. There's like, there's a lot of good things in that building. I've never seen it, but it was just a thought. Instead of remodeling all this other stuff, we could go there and be done with it. It does pull it out of the center of town, so that has a negative. But um, but you also have to deal with the buildings you own. That's Every true. Every time you pull yep. something, oh no, off never, the yeah, never ends. To figure out how to, how to just want to mention it. that that was something that somebody had thought about. Yeah, that somebody we should look into, but. And it's owned by somebody, and that somebody pays taxes. That's right. That's the have, other issue. They would have to be willing to sell it. Correct. And, and then we lose the tax base. Able to take the tax hit. Yeah. And uh, so there's yeah. a whole process. You yeah. have to find money for the appraisal, mm -hmm. negotiate, I, yeah, purchase and sale. I hear all that. Depending on town meeting vote, I, it's, I, a, it's a big it's deal. It's a huge deal. But yeah. I, I just wanted to mention it because people were, several people mentioned it. And then the other issue is that my, my biggest fear is that you know, it gets swallowed up by a charter school and we wind up losing the tax and paying a ton of money. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be more expensive than I think the thing school. about it is and less and less easier to convert than it was Channing B. I mean, that's why yeah. we were sweating. Channing right. B. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. So hard You've to been in treated. probably. I've never been in. I've been in the it's a huge property. It is, it? is a huge property. Yeah, it's huge. Huge. It's, it's huge. it's not really can a you fit athletic fields in the back. Uh, there, there's, there's too much wet. There's too much wetland there. OK, yeah. I mean, it they built all kinds of detention ponds and everything. Yeah. So they probably turned a swamp into, right. you know. Right. Back in the day when you could. Yeah. Back in the day when you could. <laughs> um, there's one other thing you're going to see. Uh, I was, Bruce St. Peter's reached out to me about the road acceptance process. I reviewed the documentation. I just haven't put it oh, in a step-by-step for him. Didn't mention I promised that. him I would give him an email by the end of the week. Yeah. So essentially they are looking, they meaning the HOA is looking to have the board or have the town accept the road. Right. So what I was going to do is outline what oh. needs to happen. But my suggestion for the board is the town does not have the money to pay for these, some of these things like the survey and stuff. Yeah. If they want it, I think it's their responsibility to pay for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if that's something you think by consensus is uh, reasonable to say, I would appreciate it because I want to give them a more clear outline. Yeah. I don't know how the past, the town has taken on those costs. But at this point, yeah, it really, not really are. if they want it, they should be paying for it. Um, I'll set and I that don't motion want to until it's forward. I'm just saying, you know, this is their ask. And I know the road's up to code. I talked to Kevin about it. Oh, today. yeah. Everything's um, done right. That's that's something that I think we don't have to worry about. It's a question of timing. So I had advised Bruce that we should consider doing it in the fall because it'll happen faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my outline really gives him some idea of timeline because we have hearing notices that we have to do. I think yeah. you have to have verification of um, that it is up to spec and that has to be a third party review from my understanding. You can check with Lisa on that. But it can't be just Kevin saying, yeah, it's fine. It has to be. So the subdivision seat. road is in the subdivision. Right. Which is provided as part of the as built documents. Right. But it has, you're verifying that what is in the plans has actually been built out there. And there is, you have to hire someone besides having And Kevin. so that's why I would like them to yeah. pay for yes. it. Yeah, yeah, right. it sounds uh, good. yeah, exactly. I mean, I think there's you, obviously a benefit. Do some sort of a survey. There's a benefit to the HOA to turn it over. Right. Have, and and so yes that's yes. yeah that's a quid pro quo 
school yep. kind of thing. <laughs> That's why I yeah. asked because yeah. I do think there's some responsibility the HOA needs to own. Yes, but it, I just want to make it clear that that, that third party. I have the guidance document. Yeah. That's what I was going to yeah. transcribe okay. some of those items. Perfect. I, I don't feel like it's ours. Did you want to discuss this? Oh, I can um, say my two oh, cents on that. If you uh, yes, if you want to. I was just going to put it on the agenda for 614. Oh, I, so I don't think it's it's not in our purview to a point. Like, so a couple of things. They're trying to create a committee. They already can create the committee. We don't have to appoint to some right. other new committee. They're they're an energy committee. They can just make so a subcommittee, so, right? So they're energy. So, so they we, they, we they can, appoint themselves. They can appoint themselves to a subcommittee oh, well, group to, to work with the other okay. towns. But we have no say over Frontier of the District. So really. What we had told them last time is go to Darius. If Darius, and, and it's not even Darius, go to the Frontier School Committee. committee. If the school committee would like to invite knowledge and advice, which I'm sure they would, because they want it, what they're trying to do is group together all the green communities grants from all the towns so that they can hand Frontier money for energy efficiency stuff. That's a great thing. And I think the, the Frontier School Committee would be interested in hearing that, but it's nothing that the select board has any say over. We don't have any say over any committee to go before the Frontier School Committee. Right. Okay, so I sent an email. We I sent, already sent we, an we email sent to, today. to MA. Oh, okay. Yes. And so she wants you guys to do it. I don't think it's your purpose. It's not our job. Um, yeah. What I suggested to her was what he just mentioned, which is create a subcommittee, approach the other three towns, and come up with a plan to then take to the school committee because then they have something to chew on. Right. right. And, and whether they do it or not is enough to me. But. It all needs to go in front of the school committee. We frankly right. support okay. them working together and right. doing all that. It's just that we're not it, creating a committee doesn't do it. We, we can't we create no a committee to go in front of a district. Sure. No, that's fine. That makes sense because we we don't have to and the, they have the power district. already to do yeah. a subcommittee and work with the other towns. Right. Well, I, I right. So I had addressed that after I talked to um, Trevor about it because I read the email and went, hmm, we can't do that. But not because I'm trying to be obstructive, no, but because I, they're a separate elected group. They can do it already, I think, and then just go and talk to yeah, the school. I mean, and I think they, Darius they, is going to invite them. Having a subcommittee makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You just have to follow the posting rules for it. Right. And reaching out to the other towns to sort of take their temperature. And, and combine those. I, I that think makes a lot of sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think they're already uh, on board so, for that. Yeah, I think they figured out I think out we're the only ones that didn't appoint, but... There I isn't mean, anybody to appoint. To. It's I'm not just saying right. it's other select boards. I know it, it does but, not doesn't make sense. But that's the thing. It's not something you have any authority over. Right. Really, they need to take some sort of discussion topic to the school committee, and Darius is perfectly happy to take it to that. Right. To to put it on an agenda, but they need to do the request. Well, I I know it's Jason Curtis, um, David Keith, M A, Sweetland, and Lori Basada all hardworking mm -hmm. energy committee people. So we are fully supportive of them reaching out mm -hmm. to the school committee. Even if other select boards have appointed their energy committee, we also, we are saying we don't feel like we have the authority. We've already, so we've already appointed these people to the energy and they, committee. And they can just self-appoint themselves to a, as well. a subcommittee and then just go for it. If there's a quorum of the committee in any of these meetings, they have to have two postings. And one. with four people, I think that that's a quorum. Will, quorum. So that's quorum. Can you send them a e clarifying email that is an open meeting requirement yep. because there's four of them mm -hmm. that if they are f all four together, then they have to post a meeting. Yeah, and and you know this is if there are four towns that are going to contribute energy committee members to this subcommittee, it might, for practical reasons, make more sense to have one person from each energy committee be the committee that goes to the schools, mm. and then bring you know have individual discussions and posted meetings about what you know each of them want to bring to the committee. Yeah, you know, right. It does, however they want to do it. I'm, yeah, it's I'm, all, we're 100 percent It all starts at Frontier. It's right. not a, our, it's not us. So right. even yeah. though we support them working on it. Conveying. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll talk to MA until she understands yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they have the authority and it's Frontier and we are is the committee, right. not us. We support what we you want to do. It. Figure out how you want to do it. Yeah. And ask the Frontier School yeah. Committee right. how they want they to have do to be allowed, yeah. invited. Yes. Absolutely. It's not us to do that. Okay. Okay. So, so motion all right. to adjourn.
You second? Uh, yeah, second. All those All in favor? favor? I want to stay a little longer. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got it. Trevor, All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. Sorry. Carolyn, yes. Okay, so we, it was unanimous. All right. Thank you.